The Hawaiian, the Eliminator, Elimile McFarland. Bellator MMA tonight from Pachanga Resort and Casino is pre presented to you by Miller Lite. We now go to three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing first the blue corner. At five foot five, she weighed in 125.4 pounds. Her professional record stands even at two and two. She fights out of Los Angeles, California. Introducing Maria Rios. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. At five foot four, she weighed in 125.2 pounds early on in her professional career. She stands at one and oh, by way of Honolulu, Hawaii. She fights out of San Diego, California, introducing Elimine, the Eliminator McFarland. In charge of the action, your referee, Mike Beltran. The tale of the day brought to you by Dave and Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Oftentimes, a fighter's first professional fight is as anonymous as it can possibly be. For Lee Malay McFarland, that is not the case. It is not 1-0, and, oh, and also seven years younger than her opponent, Maria Rios. That win, of course, the infamous soccer mom video went viral. Talked to Lee Malay about it at length the other day. He offers no apologies for that incident. As a fighter, you beat who's in front of you. That's a fault of the promoter, in my opinion. Comes out aggressively again. Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original Pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Hawaii wants a hotbed of MMA fighters. Extremely aggressive, something they're known for from the beginning. McFarlane. San Diego State to become a teacher. Instead, she was taught the art of MMA. That was my old job, I understand completely. <laughs> Some of those students can get. Oh unruly. my God, it makes you want to go train. You have no idea. Like what I'm seeing so far from McFarland's boxing. Good angling, good footwork, not standing straight in front of Rios. Rios, though, guard high, waiting for those countering opportunities. She'd prefer the fight on the ground. She is all about BJJ. Being all about BJJ is great, but first, you got to be all about wrestling. So you got to get him down. Footwork on the floor, which is keeping the distance. Watch your fingers. Rios right now walking forward, but in terms of her striking, more in a, of a countering mode. This is McFarlane who's getting off first. You know what they call the ever-growing fan base for Alima Lay McFarlane? Oh the Illuminati. <laughs> that is appropriate. I wish they had a name that, that transitioned well into something yeah, like Jimmy that. Jimmy Smith. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. Lost her footwork and inadvertently ended up where she didn't want to be. Wow, just what Rios needed. That's a break and a half. You couldn't get yeah, the fight certainly. to the ground. Tony does slip. it for you. There's a lot of pressure on that defensive half guard position. The key to that is keeping the shin across. Now going for the Kimura. Hard to finish here, but you can get a very nice sweep out of it. Farland staying busy on the ground. But there are times you're just thinking about the sweep. Oh, yeah, for sure. And this is one of them. Now, once she sweeps her, then there she can go. finish. There's the sweep. You see how she lost the Kimura with the sweeps. Very hard to keep. Thought for a second she was transitioning into a key lock. She lets go. Yeah, it's hard to finish the Kimura from half guard, but you can't sweep somebody with it. Pretty much everybody in the MMA community knows that one fight only lasted about 30 seconds. This is obviously new territory for her. She's doing a great job passing guards. Rios able to get it back, and they're back to the feet. But what Rios just learned is she's not going to have her way on the ground either. 
he was not working out on the feet. It's not as though McFarlane doesn't have jujitsu skills, because she clearly does. That's got to be disheartening. You want to think, once a fight's in your wheelhouse, I got this, and Rhea just got swept. Beautiful job by McFarlane. And things aren't getting better for Rios on the feet, either. Good. The footwork is good, and now she's going forward. Two strong rights. Rios in trouble. Those eyes are getting wide. It's the same combination over and over. That right hand over the top. Rios not making the proper adjustments on the feet, but good job with the outside trip. Marlon, no hurry to get up. She had the better of it the first time it was on the ground. Surprise me, folks, with popping yeah. up. There she goes. I look for a high crotch. Ten seconds. See the athleticism, but also the learning curve in fight number two for Ali Malay McFarland. Ali Malay McFarland. You ready to fight? Handle it. What do you tell Maria Rios in between rounds? You tell her to do whatever she trained, and I don't, I don't know what that is in terms of they had to have an answer for this kind of attack. I don't know what it is. It might be go harder for the takedown, change it to ground and pound instead of submission, because right now she's getting beat up on the feet. She can't take too many more of these shots. She's eating him to try to get inside. McFarland's footwork has been good. My advice would be get this fight to the ground. And when you do, don't make it a submission battle. Make it about ground and pound. See if you can bust her up on the floor. Would you like to see McFarland busier? She's winning the fight. She doesn't have to get any busier. No, I think she's doing everything she needs to do. If her goal is a, another spectacular finish, yes. But in a fight you're winning in Bellator where you want to make a name, keep doing what you're doing. It's the one that's losing, in this case, Rios, that needs to change it up. Fighters always ask me, they say, you know, do you tell a fighter to change it up or change things in between rounds? And they say, if the script has you winning at the end of the movie, do <laughs> yeah. you rewrite it? Yeah. No, don't do that. Maybe show them a different look they haven't seen, but the strategy of keeping on the feet and boxing, that's working for Rios. I'm a little confused. We're not seeing more commitment to the takedown from Rios. She's getting tagged up on the feet, and yet we haven't even seen that desperation clinch or double leg takedown. She hasn't sold out for a takedown. That's strange. She's waiting for an opening that Ali Malay has not given her. Could be waiting for her to slip and fall down again. <laughs> that was her biggest break of the fight. Oh, oh, strong man. right. Now that's the head back. That's a tactical mistake by McFarlane. Committed to the head and arm throw and it slipped out. A very dangerous throw in MMA. What is she being coached to do with the hips that we're hearing? What she's trying to, well, Rios wants to get her hips underneath and lift and maybe get a suplex position. For McFarlane, it's put your hands on your opponent's wrist and get your hip forward to wrestling escape. 
hips are very important for both of these fighters right now. Corner saying throw knees because Rios, the taller fighter, can throw knees from this position. fascinating if you're Lima Lee McFarland to try and escape somewhere you've never been before. Most of the fighters always how they deal with adversity in little ways, even if it's a momentary adversity, which, is that, which this has been for McFarland in the fight that she's been dominating. That's how you learn. Back to that stomp over and over again. Old school technique. It's real old school. That goes before the grants like Bugs Bunny as before the Gracie. Very old school. Always vulnerable to that right hand over and over again. She's eating about eight or nine of those. Strong right. Ten seconds. Lee Malay McFarland began the second round as the aggressor. She closes it that way. And a strong elbow finishes round two. You ready to fight? Hell, let's go. Two zero here, McFarland clear easily. Wouldn't give many tenny. The fight just hasn't been that one-sided. She hasn't come that close to finishing. There hasn't really been a finishing moment so far in this fight. McFarlane just giving her a steady diet of right hands. It's a discussion of much debate in the MMA community. Are there really enough 10-8 rounds? It's hard sometimes when you can train a certain way. The line just isn't as clear as it is in boxing. Most people grew up watching boxing, and a 10-8 round is a rarity when there probably aren't enough of them in MMA. The two things I look for are a complete dominance and a fight-ending moment. There are moments in that fight where you think, oh, this is about to end, but we haven't seen a lot of that. We've had dominance here, but not a fight-ending moment. Not fight-ending fight moments, yet. exactly. <laughs> Nothing starts a debate on Twitter like <laughs> scoring around 10-8. Well, I didn't know that. I, was just, I just accidentally threw that out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. RPM for me. <laughs> Welcome to MMA, buddy. So that is work to finish. In many ways, as dominant as this has been, a performance for McFarland, this is what you want for a fighter in a second fight. You get a seasoned professional, a long fight, a lot of different situations. You want them to get minutes, you want them to get rounds. <laughs> Learn how to avoid getting your foot stopped on. Watch fingers, watch fingers. Rios has still been tentative for that takedown that she desperately needs now. Patience is important, but not when you're down 2-0 in the final two minutes of the fight. Nice right hand. In every combat sport, there comes that question, am I there to survive or am I there to win? Every fighter who's behind makes that decision. You know, the agreement, I won't try to win if you won't hurt me. Rios has to get past that and try hard to win this fight because it is slipping away. The problem is there's a position you never want to be in, which is your opponent can dance and stick and move and not do too much and get this go, fight go, ladies, work, because of the dominance work of the first finish, two rounds. What's your biggest takeaway seeing Aline Malay McFarland for the first time? I like her striking technique a lot. I like her footwork. I like her combinations. She's well-rounded. She's aggressive. What kind of fight do you want to see again? What do you 
you think her take will be? Depends on how critical she is of herself. Some fighters, it's never, ever good enough. And those are usually the great fighters. Jeff McGinnis, famous wrestler at the University of Iowa, won a national title, undefeated as a sophomore. After the, the match, he was asked, how oh, could have done much better than that? And he goes, I could have pinned him. He could always get better. You see the damage that Lehman Lane McFarland has taken. Left side of the nose, there's another slip. We've seen that more than once here. Cage position to do what she wanted to do yeah, on that take down. Exactly. And that's cage time. These fighters only 125 pounds. You got to really put everything behind the throw. They don't generate a ton of momentum. A lot of speed, but a throw like that is difficult. Third round has been Rios's best. Also, a big factor might be McFarlane has put in the work and might be taking your foot off the gas, letting Rios back into the fight. First two rounds, this fight was largely in the pocket, which is where McFarlane wanted it. Nice outside trip. Rios going for it here, but is it going to be too little too late in the final seconds? Jacqueline Dinkin scores the fight 29 to 28. She sees it for Rios. Your second judge, Chris Crail, scores the fight 29 to 28, seeing the fight for McFarlane. Your third and final judge at cage side, Michael Bell, scores the fight 29 to 28 for the winner by split decision, Elie Malay. The Elimanator McFarlane. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the St. Mark Center in Fresno, we now go to three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing the blue corner first. At five foot four, she weighed in 125 pounds even. Her professional record stands at one and one from Visalia, California. Introducing Amber Gethin Tarkin. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. At five foot four, she weighed in 125.6 pounds as a professional. She stands undefeated at two and oh. Originally from Honolulu, Hawaii, she fights out of San Diego, California. Elimile, Eliminator McFarlane. In charge of the action, your referee, Big John McCarthy. The Tale of the Tape brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Look at the significant reach advantage for Ali Malay McFarlane. How will she use it? Are right, you ready? You ready? Get it up! Ali Malay McFarlane is a name that first came to national prominence for all the wrong reasons. You may remember the soccer mom fight. White Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. The original light beer. Cheers. It's Miller time. And Ali Malay was not apologetic about that at all. She did what she felt was her job. A lot of the heat came down on her because people behind who were responsible for her behind the scenes, their names people didn't know. All they saw was Ali Malay McFarland scoring this ugly knockout win in a fight that should not have happened. But Ask Ali Malay about it. She said, I did my job. Now, she's not the promoter. It's her job to beat who's in front of her, and that's exactly what she did. Her second win we saw here in Bellator, and she struggled as a younger fighter will, learning how to finish. On a pass guard here, trying to force that knee through. There it is. But only for a split second. She's getting the arm on yep. the way out. Yep. We saw this in the Ayala fight. Same position, but her legs are in a much better spot here. Trying to sweep and control the legs. She can't walk over the head. Back 
has to get her hips over the body of McFarlane. You see her trying to step over, but McFarlane has that hand on the leg. Keeps her from stepping over and relieving the pressure on her arm. When you're going for that arm bar, Jimmy, when is it better to cross your legs and when is it not? It's almost never better to cross your legs. It's better to keep the bite on the head. It's a big part of the power from the arm bar. She has it extended, but it's further up. Can't see if her hips are all the way on the joint. Tackett trying to walk over, it might be too late. Yeah, she, she doesn't have a lot of room yep. to do it. It's not a good position for either fighter. It's hard for McFarlane to extend in this position. It's hard for Tackett to walk over, she got it. That's it. Tapped out with her foot. She was so frustrated, but she had nowhere to go. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the verbal tap ends it by way of an arm bar. Official time, two minutes, nine seconds into round number one. She's still undefeated, the winner by submission, eliminate, the eliminator, McFarlane. Now, returns to the Bellator cage, three five minute rounds in the flyweight division, brought to you by Icy Hot Smart Relief 10 Therapy. Turn off back pain. And now, introducing the blue corner at five foot four, weighing in 126 pounds. Her professional record undefeated. Three wins, no defeats, fighting out of San Diego, California. She hails from Honolulu, Hawaii. Introducing Elimine, the Eliminator McFarland. And across the cage, finding out of the red corner at five foot five, she weighed in 124.9 pounds as a professional. Near perfect, six victories, just one defeat, fighting out of Pacific, Missouri. Presenting ruthless Rebecca Ruth. And the referee in charge of the action, Mike England. Are you ready, fighter? Are you ready, fighter? Let's fight. Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers. It's Miller time. Everything on Chinikova tried, Rebecca Ruth seemed ready for it. On the ground, on the feet. What Chinikova couldn't do was overcome the physical dominance of Ruth. She would lock up with her, try her throws, try to out-technique her, and Rebecca Ruth stopped it every time. And the layup avoids the first rush by changing levels. No surprise here. She wants this fight on the ground. She wants it on the ground quick. Becca Ruth, mother of two, began to train MMA. She was really more of a boxer, but there just weren't enough gyms to train female boxers in this part of the country. Strong takedown from Malia Malia. And she's around the hips, trying to control her. Turned her back for the stand-up. Got to be careful here. Onto your opponent's leg, opens up your neck. And then they're trying to get the hook in. Too aggressive, too early? I think so. And also, Rebecca Ruth here, she's in good shape. She's controlled the wrist, she's the wrestling escape. Control the hands, get her hips out in front of her. Going back to the fence isn't a bad idea either. Good turn by Rebecca Ruth. Asked Rebecca Ruth the other day, I said, how did your life change after that TV win over Ochinikova back in February, and people recognizing her. I said, were the kids happy? I said, yeah, yeah, they, they bragged a little bit in school. <laughs> Working inside. Emily McFarlane not having success with the takedown yet. Got it briefly, couldn't keep her down. And you see, energy. But Rebecca Ruth just going right after her. There's any separation. Watchful fights for Bellator and premier boxing champions previously on the Spike app, available now for IOS and Android. That's right, PBC on Spike. Lake July in Quebec City. Going international on Spike Sports. And for London, July 16th. Now a good level change there. And the difference here is Lena Ovchinikova came in with more of a judo background. She likes the upper body takedowns. Lima in the front, she's going to change levels. She's going to go for that single leg, now switching to the double. 
Defense is slightly different. Upper body stuff, Rebecca Ruth could power her way out of, but around the legs, she's got to work on her balance. Looks good so far. Farland's two fights inside the Bellator cage, both clearly learning experience. 26 years old, fourth professional fight. Rebecca Ruth went MMA when the early boxing gyms and trained women. And racked up an impressive record and scored five knockouts in her five wins. But no one really knew what to expect. She was a complete unknown quantity when she stepped in with her chin and a strong takedown. Uh, and even Lynn McFarlane has been sticking to the game plan. She knows what she needs to do. Part of the game plan might be Rebecca Ruth comes in with a lot of fire, a lot of aggression. Take that out of her in the first round. Slow it down. Make it a slower, more grinding kind of fight. We haven't seen her do that yet. Last fight went the distance, but Rebecca Ruth, foot on the gas the whole time. There were moments against Ochini Copa where you thought, well, okay, there it is. That was a gallant effort by Rebecca Ruth, but now she's on the ground, and Ochini Copa's going to start to work. She just passed it out. Her defense on the ground was tremendous. Counter guillotine positions. Higher head wins this. Right now, it's Lima Lee McFarlane with the higher head. She's about an inch shorter when they're standing. She's going for it. Hips aren't engaged yet, though. She is cranking on it. Ruth is out. What Ruth can't do is end up getting frustrated. Gotta stay with the game plan. But right now, Lily McFarland's putting a lot of physical pressure on her. Rebecca Ruth's fight against Ochinikova was her first as a full-time fighter, but she didn't have to worry about working a second job. Lima Lane McFarland still does work that second job, and in fact, kind of now using the recognition factor to kind of helped her along and get that. She was recognized when she was applying for a job, and they said, oh yeah, you're the one from, you know, <laughs> right on the spot. It won't be long before I imagine many people will recognize that face and that name. Smart first round for Lima Lane McFarland, keeping Rebecca Ruth at bay. Ruth left of the screen. She hunted the hunter, Lino Chidikov in February, but not able to in the first round. Early on, she wanted to eliminate the eliminator. Lino McFarland, good trick. And she's sticking with the program. Trying to stay close, get the takedown. She got it early this time. Right before the submission, she might have it. She got aggressive. She was able to keep her balance. Trying to get that second hook in. Looks like it's deep. I can't see from here. If it's under the chin, she can tap her right here with one hook. Rebecca Ruth did some trouble. On. Desperately reaching for the arm. Alima Lane McFarland closing in. It's a good turn by Rebecca Ruth, but now she's back in deep trouble. Trying to keep that hand down, trying to peel it off and turn. She's either getting out or she's going out. She's putting a lot of effort into this escape. She's got it up near the chin. Got to force her chin down and turn. She got she it. Did it. Unbelievable escape by Rebecca Roof. She was tiptoeing the line, but how much did she give to that escape? And still on her back. Alina Lee still has great position. Rebecca, Rebecca Ruth's not enough to get out of the choke because it'll just happen again. Rebecca Ruth has not really been in a spot like this. Most of her fights have been stand-up fights. Her only loss coming by split decision. And another mistake, leaving her neck out. Alina Lee tenacious with this submission game. Executed the game plan, waited for her opportunity in the first round. That is very deep. And she's trying to put it, her arm on the shoulder. She only, it only takes one arm. Rebecca Roos still fighting hard here. She's looking for a way out of this position. And the last thing she wants to do is this. 
She's got to turn and get her back on the mat. Maybe use her hip escape, but it's clear she just hasn't done these desperation kind of drills when she's getting out of an opponent taking her back. And she's able to regain her feet. And now which way does it go? You can get choked out here, it doesn't matter. Aliba Lee McFarland is digging in. This is way tighter now, this is done. She's out. It's over. Aliba Lee McFarland would not be denied. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap finally comes to the rear naked choke official time. Three minutes into round number two, the winner by submission and still undefeated Eliminator, the Eliminator McFarland. Bellator MMA presented by Miller Lite now features three five minute rounds in the flyweight division brought to you tonight by Spike Sports. We introduce the blue corner first. At five foot two, weighing in 124.8 pounds, her professional record four wins, just one defeat, fighting out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, presenting Emily Bonilla Ducody. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, at five foot four, she weighed in 125.6 as a professional. She's undefeated at four and zero, oh, hailing from Honolulu, Hawaii. Introducing Eliminate, the Eliminator, McFarland. And the referee in charge of the action, Big John McCarthy. Styles make fights, and Alima Lay McFarland is more aggressive than anybody right. Emily Ducote has been Ready? in the cage with in her first five. Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. Oklahoma State and San Diego State. Oh, big nice shot up early. Cut. And setting the tone early. Lee Lee McFarland trying to get tricky with that ground game. She's a 10th planet grappler. That means unorthodox techniques, a lot of flexibility, great guard. Emily Ducote, a little more traditional with her jujitsu. One step at a time. Emily Ducote with that wrestling background, the strong wrestling background collegiately, had so much difficulty as a young girl trying to find a place to rest. Very, very tough. And that hip pressure now. Slips Step it over. over. Not in the full mount and yet. She's in the leg lock down. trouble. Able to power out of it. See the difference with the stability of Ducote. Alina Lane McFarlane staying very tricky with the half guard. Trying to get underneath for a sweep here. Single leg now. Good sprawl by Dakota. Trying to find a home for that knee. Emily McFarland, who spent so much time around the great Liz Carmouche, cornered her at Madison Square Garden a couple of weeks back. Didn't know who she was when she first went to the gym. She quickly found out. Nice double leg. Now see if Dakota can get done from her back. We haven't really seen her in this position. Download the new and improved Bellator MMA mobile app for exclusive videos, fighter stats, upcoming events, and ticket info. So many great events coming up. You can also become the fourth judge and score every round live with other fans. Available now for iOS and Android. And fun, staying very tight here, looking for ground and pound. Nice Good sweep. Team. Beautiful job, Emily Ducote. Still in leg lock trouble. Trying to isolate that left leg. 
can hear this home court advantage here. Over 100 tickets. Emily Ducote had to come up with for this one. One, one hook. hook. Can't get the other one in because of the fence. Still a lot of physical pressure by Emily Ducote. McFarland locked onto that right hand of Emily Ducote. Now switches on the arm. Tough spot to get a Kimura. I'm surprised Emily Ducote doesn't try a little bit more to break away. She seems content for a grappling match so far, even though she hurt Alima McFarland on the feet. Two young fighters really coming into their own. Great matchup to have these two meet now. Might not be the last time you see them together inside the Bellator cage. This position she's in a lot against Rebecca Roof. Staying close with the takedown. She gets it again. Trying to step over. And Cody trying to keep that half guard. Good job trapping the right arm of Dakota. Back to full guard, man. Tough round to score. Pretty even with one minute left. And this has been many different fights within the first four minutes. And yeah, this first round got to be up for grabs here. Walking up, wrist control means hunting for a triangle. Going for the arm bar, trying to get it. Good job by Lee ducking her head down, staying too tight. Cody very active, looking for submissions. Nice sweep into full mount. That's her second of this round. And with a round teetering on the brink here, that could be what decides it. Strong start, strong finish from Emily Ducote in round one. It was a very close first round. Was those last 10 seconds enough for you to yeah, go Emily Ducote? Yeah, 10 Ducote's Emily Ducote. Ah! Try to come in with the uppercut, eight and left. You see how, I mean, almost everything you could imagine, any number you could conjure is going to be very even in that first round. Just to see the steps these two have made in the last year or two, this is high level stuff right now. I all think they're the two best right now in the division. So much external conversation, a lot of pressure media-wise. When is there going to be a title fight? Oh, there's hesitation. Nice. Good counter right by McFarland. And that was a big question for me leading up to this fight. We knew they both had ground skills. Who was going to own the fight on the feet? Well, even like, I said, tough, like I said, tough shot in the first round, but doing well to open up the second. And a drive through with that right knee. Not accepting full guard. And Cody has to work from half guard. over the top. Look at her going over the top of the head. Emily Ducote almost out of that half guard. A lot of chokes she can set up from there. Emily has to be very, very careful uh, which way she turns her body and her head. Next Saturday afternoon here on Spike will be Florence, Italy. Hometown hero, Alessio Sakara, they go crazy in Italy when he's in the cage against the veteran Joey Beltran. We'll see Goichi Yamauchi next Saturday. 4 p.m. Eastern, live on Spike. And Lima McFarland putting a lot of pressure on the back of the head. A lot of you know by now that middleweight world title fight will not happen next Saturday. We were waiting for confirmation last night, the injury to the world champion, Rafael Carvalho, will likely be rescheduled. And she was trying to set up there with some Darce choke attacks. Nice transition out of the back, and with Cody able to pull half guard again, but it's been a lean McFarlane who's been the aggressor in this second round. 
Dangerous turn for Dakota. She gives up her back. Tried to sweep Alima Lay and got caught. Halfway, now stepping over the arm. Alima Lay is trying to take Emily Dakota's left arm yep. away defensively so she doesn't have it. Exactly. Much easier to get the rear naked choke. BJ Penn made that move famous. Another Hawaiian. Alima Lay McFarlane, now if she can get her left hand free. Dangerous spot for Dakota. Just grab her thumb, grab the whole hand. In survival mode now, has to get out of here. She's gonna turn this round around, because so far it's been one-sided. And all the legal and fall. Now she's gotta watch her arm. Watch that left arm, armbar transition. Dakota was watching BJ Penn on Spike with her grandmother <laughs> years ago. Now here she is. All in spot. Bad move. Never reach for the feet. Then you can't protect your neck. You deal with the feet with your legs. Got to be very careful. Now stepping over for the arm bar. Dakota trying to control the feet so she can spin out the back door. Watch how she has her hand on that foot. Prevent from stepping over the head. She can post on that leg and maybe angle and come out. The leg is an over the face. She don't have an armbar. Now she switches, going for the armbar transition. cody has got to move. She's out. She does. Emily Ducote on thin ice for the last 30 seconds. But she's still skating. Going to be enough to win back the round, but she won herself a third round to fight in. Good stuff through two. But she no doubt will be partaking in when this is over. With five more minutes of work in what has been a fascinating two rounds, and they're clearly tied after two. 10-9, uh, 10-9. First round for Dakota, second one for McFarland. I said, don't go down this round. You gotta stay on your feet. The Cody submissions come off attack on the feet. Whereas Alima Lane McFarland more comfortable on the ground hunting for submissions that way. That's her money punch, that lean in right hand. So far, power in the one shot, which is a combination. Level change from Alina yeah. McFarland. This time, Dakota with a good sprawl. Cannot kill the takedown here. She had a good cross face and went to the guillotine. Interesting choice. Much easier now for Alina to get the takedown. And she does. Dakota going for the guillotine, but hard to get. Don't have full guard. She's out. Pass variation here right in the half guard. Lynn McFarland doesn't have a lot of room to work now because of the fence. But neither does Emily Dakota. Oh. Keep that in mind. Can't shrimp, can't angle your hips the way you want to. Emily Dakota focusing on that left arm of Alima Lynn McFarland. Good. Holding on to it. Yep. Good wrist control. It's keeping her in the fight, but. Needs to get some offense of her own going. Back to half guard. And in the close fight, moving into the middle stages of round three, position here very important to everything.
Cody has really been a bulldog in half guard, hanging on to that leg. Always driving in is Alima Fon with that right knee. Back to her feet. Try to catch her in the scramble. A dangerous moment there for Emily Ducote. Emily Ducote has to win back this round. If there's any hope of winning a decision. Nice uppercut by Alimale. We've got some drama here. Final two minutes. Alimale is aware of the right hand of Emily Ducote. And it's Ducote on the level change in the tech top. Now she's really got to get busy. Not a lot of time left. She has to really go vicious with the ground and pound. Rubber guard from Alimale. Can't find its specialty. Yep. One minute. One minute. It creates a weak side, and that's what Emily Ducote is taking advantage of now. Just passing, or just staying in, in half guard is enough. She has to pass, she has to really do something to win back this round or get a finish. Only a minute left. Alimale doing a good job defensively here so far. A chant of OKC for Emily Ducote and all her fans here. Since she was unaffected fighting at home. That's really her personality. She shuts everything out. Alimale going for the Kimura. It would be probably more of a sweep from this position. But what it's doing is it's stalling the offense of Emily Ducote. You see the wrist lock there. She has a wrist locked up. Stalling the offense of someone exactly. who desperately needs offense now. Exactly. Exactly. She can't really raise up and get any ground pound going. She has to worry about her left shoulder. Hard to finish here. But also Emily Ducote can't get a ground pound going. See, there's the sweep from the Kimura. Not going to finish from here, but she can end up on top. Good job. They have been far and away the two best in the division, and they showed us why tonight. Back and forth fight, not just the rounds, but within rounds themselves. Let's check out the Black Card Premium Spice Rum Replay, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Lima Lee McFarlane early on getting the takedowns. No fear of the wrestling experience of Emily Ducote. Emily Ducote getting sweeps in the opening round, showing that she has serious jujitsu skills of her own. But in the second round, Aliyah Malay starting to pull away, especially on the ground. Her submission skills there, answering on the feet, the offensive. Emily Ducote. In round number three, it was Alimale with the fast start, the takedown. Emily Ducote, Emily Ducote getting back into it with a takedown of her own, but I don't think enough time to retake that third round. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Todd Anderson, scores the fight 30 to 27. While judges Dan Matisse and David Sutherland both see the fight the same at 29 to 28. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated Eliminate, the Eliminator McFarlane. There's the smile and the emotion. Live on Spike and presented by Miller Lite, Bellator MMA now features tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot seven, weighing in 126 pounds even. Her professional record early on stands undefeated at two and zero. Oh, she fights out of Wichita, Kansas, Jessica Middleton. And across the cage, her adversary fights out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 126 pounds. Undefeated as a professional, five victories, no defeats from Honolulu, Hawaii, presenting Eliminator, the Eliminator McFarland.
in charge of the action, referee Kevin McDonald. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Let's go. The fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. Both were sort of YouTube sensations. Jessica Middleton made a million hits with that spinning back fist knockout as an amateur. And of course, the long since forgotten soccer mom video, which is what put Alima Lane McFarland on the map for the first time. Alima Lane trying to get in. Straight right hands, left hooks, not a lot of setups, not a lot of outside punches. She talked about takedown defense, the anti-wrestling is how she phrased it. She talked about Joanna Yeo Jaychuk and her anti-wrestling when talking about Jessica Bent. Earlier on tonight, we told you July 14th, the return of Patricky Pitbull to the Bellator cage. This could easily end up being a number one contender fight at 155 as he rematches with Derek Campos. And the neck crank position is not going to hold. Tickets will go on sale next week. This is where Alimale wanted the fight, and it's early. They're both dry. Crucifix position already. Knee over. It's only the half guard really that's saving Middleton here. She's able to keep it. Side control, that would have been big trouble. She, Jessica Middleton was on top of Bruna Allen a lot in that fight. Bruna Allen almost seemed content there, and then all of a sudden started getting pounded. Jessica Middleton took a lot of grief from her friends for that. Like, you, you beat up Bruna Allen. You can just do that. Nice step over, going for the armbar. Finishing this She's, early. That's deep. Jessica Middleton in a world of trouble. Doesn't have a lot of room to spin out of it. And she's going hard for it. Hips all the way in. She's going to have to turn it. She's flexible, but only save her for so long. But she is not letting this go, trying to put it behind the armpit. That's there it is. It. Every time we see her, Alima Lay McFarland is more and more impressive. She got that to the ground fast, and what she did, man, one step at a time right to the armbar. That's how you're supposed to do it. Let's check out the Black Card Premium Spice Rope replay, the bold 93 proof rub. It's edgy to the core. Armbar. I cannot believe Jessica Middleton hung in as long as she did. She must be flexible because this is tight. Both knees together, trying to put it behind the armpit, but couldn't hold it. When she switches sides, look at it here, both knees together. When she puts the wrist underneath her right armpit, that's when it's too tight for Jessica Middleton. She tries to roll out, the cage is in the way. She could not escape right here. When it goes behind the armpit, that's when it's done. Tap or snap at this point. Look at it here. This is when it's ultra tight. Too much for Jessica Middleton. Beautiful stuff by Lee Malay McFarlane. You know where she wants to fight on the ground, and that's why she is a killer. Don't let the pretty face fool you. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator case, the tap comes by way of an arm bar official time. Two minutes, 15 seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, the eliminator, Elimine McFarland. We said she was on the inside track. She's now pulling away from the field at 125. Bellator MMA presented by Miller Lite now features tonight's co-main event from the Bryce Jordan Center tonight live on Spike. Five five-minute rounds for the inaugural Bellator Women's Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission Executive Director at Cape Side, Mr. Greg Sir. And now, first introducing the blue corner. At five foot two, weighing in 123.9 pounds. Her professional record, six victories, two defeats, fighting out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, presenting Emily Gordinha to Cody. 
across the cage, her adversary, fighting out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 124.5 pounds. Her professional record, undefeated, six victories, no defeats, hailing from Honolulu, Hawaii, introducing Eliminate, the Eliminator, McFarland. In charge of the action, your referee, Dan Mugliano. Okay. All right, ladies, we've been to the rules in the locker room. I want you to pay my commands at all time. I want you to protect yourselves at all time. Keep it safe, keep it clean. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, Lee McFarland won the first matchup. She is 6 0 in her career, 5 0 inside the Bellator cage. Emily DeCody is 4 1 in her Bellator right. career. You of ready? course, we know Let's go who fight. beat her. 11 months ago. Here we go! Title on the line. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers. It's Miller time. Blue gloves for Dakota, red gloves for McFarland. Really interested to see how the, the thoughts of the five five minute rounds affects Alima Lee McFarland's start. If she starts off aggressively or she starts thinking about her gas tank. You don't want to think about that too early. Interesting, Jimmy, that Emily Dakota said to us she's not thinking fast fight at all. She's thinking if we get there, the fourth and fifth rounds, that's where the fight starts for me. But well, tactically, you also don't want to give away three and have to catch up at the end. Never a good idea. That's one of the things people, you know, a lot of criticism recently, not just in MMA, but in boxing about judging. And one of the things about MMA, you got five rounds. If you disagree on a round, that can change the entire fight. It's like boxing, we have 10 or 12. You only have five, so you can't afford to give any away. That's championship. Emily Ducote has fought five rounds twice before, but they were three minute rounds, Jimmy. So neither fighter has gone longer than 15 minutes. Not pro championship rounds. You see the tightness of the strikes from Alimale. You see the work she's been putting in. This also the first ever rematch for both women. The long jab just missed. Cody looks like she's in a counter striking kind of mode, backing up, waiting for Alima to overcommit. Emily talking about the first fight, said, you know, when I was on top, I was winning the fight. I lost it when I was not yeah. in that position. 100%. Cody, second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Nice right hand over the top. She has trained in the same gym since she graduated from high school. She's got to get out of the way. McFarlane, the aggressor here, trying to cut off the cage. Yeah, nice tight combinations, good body shot. Good knee. See, she's been putting in work with those hands. Alimale's professional MMA debut was a 10-second knockout. Those knees are vicious. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you want to put in early in the fight. Take the ribs out, take the lungs out, take the legs out with body shots. And Jimmy, you talked about the difference between getting knocked out, you know, getting punched in the head, but the body shot turns off the body. You quit. You just don't want to be in there anymore. Lemoy so far having a great first round. Doesn't, let low, doesn't seem as though she's falling for that, that trap of thinking about rounds four and five in round one. I'm going for a neck crank. It's not under the neck, it's on the chin. She's trying to crank with it. Not in good position for a rear naked, but gave it up and go back to ground and pass. Smart move, smart move. Cody talked about her opponent. Alima Lee McFarland said, I like her style. She's a badass collegiate level wrestler, sick overhand, and doing some damage from this position right here in round one. Key to this fight to me since they announced this rematch is who's going to get on top and yep. impose their will. So far, it's Alima Lee. 
to Cody growing up, wrestled on the boys' high school team. Straight on, hard to finish from half guard. He's gonna try and pass from here. Doesn't have a foot through yet. That knee as she moved ahead, trying to pass Jimmy, landed right on the yeah. chin of the Cody. She's almost got the mount. She's doing pound to pass. She's hitting in order to get Dakota thinking about defense, and then she can pass, get her legs over the top. And she's got a slick Brazilian jiu-jitsu game. Very nice. That Eddie Bravo 10th Planet system. Yep. Got her foot through. Now she's in Kimura position, going the armbar. 10 seconds. Can she get it? I don't think she will with only a few seconds left, and we're going to see round two. Who is also fighting in a Bellator title fight for the second time as well? First ever flyweight world title fight inside the Bellator cage. And first round, about dominated by Lima and McFarland. Height with the striking, had a hurt against the fence, took her down, got top, went for a couple submissions, almost had that arm bar at the end. One sided. Well, that might have cut her. Some blood there on the nose, might have come out of the nose. Wasn't quite sure where it came from. McFarland certainly dictating the pace and the positioning of this fight thus far. Jabs just getting right through every time. As we said before, McFarland said she worked more stand up in this camp than in every other camp combined. And you can see it. You can see the results. The main training partner, Liz Carmouche, the first ever female fighter to enter the octagon. Beautiful work with that lead hand. That's a good kick by Dakota. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a takedown from Dakota. She's losing the striking battle. We've talked about how the fighter on top was so successful in round one, why she hasn't tried to get on top, because so far she's losing the boxing battle. Her nickname, Gordinha, actually means chunky. Yep. <laughs> and of course she, I don't I know would that's never that. call a woman that. Yeah, I don't know if that's the nicest I, nickname. I wouldn't give somebody that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, angry Brazilian woman, that's not, 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 not a good thing. Not a good thing. Lima McDonald be the first Bellator card on the new Paramount Network. Hometown at the floor. Love it. Nice. Really slowing down a little bit with the combinations. Very busy in round one. Yeah. Slowing down a little bit in round two. This is an opportunity for Emily yeah. Cody to start to get some momentum. Step it up. We see a different pace here in round two. Is it in her mind that this could last 25 minutes? Is Save that why this is happening? Could be. It saves something for that last round. Right now, tactically, pacing wise, she's letting Emory Dakota back into the fight mentally. Absolutely. I still think Alimla is winning this round. She's been more active with the strikes, been more accurate, throwing more and landed more. But Dakota definitely getting back into this fight now, too. Bloody elbow, very impressed with the striking. Of Alima Lay McFarland. I'm surprised he didn't say he needs to throw more elbows. Yeah, that right? would be like perfect. But, yes, it would. Uh, the evolution of her complete MMA attack. Keep going, keep going. 
stuck at the leg kicks for Cody. It's just what you said a moment ago, though, Jimmy. McFarland is giving Cody an opportunity to close the distance, close the scorecards, and get some mental confidence. Yeah. Look at that. I still have Alina so far ahead of this round, but she can go back to her corner. Her corner can go C. She's not so tough. She's slowing down. You can do this. That mental edge is so important. Which goes back to Dakota telling us that she wishes she would have nice thought left. less yep. in the first fight. That hook connected for Alimale McFarland. 30 seconds on the clock. Round two. Superman. Like Superwoman. Superwoman punch. Single leg. Ten seconds. This championship fight continues. Right, Round go, three of go, our fight. flyweight title fight. Red gloves for Alimale McFarlane. Blue gloves for Emily Dakota. What do you have on your scorecard? Both of them 10-9. Now, the first round, I almost went 10-8. It was that dominant, especially with the new rule changes. It could have been a 10-8 round. I went conservative. That second round, definitely 10-9. Emily Ducote very much in that second round, but Alima a little too accurate, landing the crisp strikes. Ducote told us the fight starts for her in rounds four and five. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling her, and I'm telling anyone who's listening, that's too late. You need three to win this fight. She has to turn it on now. Rounds four and five, what are you doing? You're hunting for a finish. Well, you make a lot of mistakes. You take big risks looking for a finish in rounds four and five. But the fight starts really for Emily right now. She has to win this third round. Ali Malay, the youngest of six children, four sisters, one brother. She likes to go two-stepping. Head out to the country bars. You'd like to do that later tonight with a belt around her waist. Would be nice. Would improve her dance moves. <laughs> it would certainly help. Definitely improve the smile on her face. <laughs> Good knee again. McFarland's done a nice job when these two fighters have been right here in the clinch. Oh, yeah. Always to the ribs over and over and over again. It takes the energy right out of it. Interesting segment of our fight right now because Alima Lee McFarland talked about like a Rebecca Ruth who's so strong and powerful, but she said she feels like she has the physical edge over Emily. Yes, yeah, she said I didn't feel that way against Emily. So she didn't feel as strong as you know, like a Rebecca Ruth who's incredibly powerful. She is. I didn't feel physically overwhelmed. And she's showing that she doesn't think she is. And that modified plum, it's an overhook on the left side, plum on the right side, and Emily hasn't found a way out of it. Lee McFarland attended the same very prestigious private high school in Hawaii as Barack Obama, the former president, Barack Obama oh. attended. And that right there was the best combination of the fight for McFarland. Great stuff. The problem, one of the problems tactically when they're on the feet is Emily Dakota is relying on short punches. She's throwing a hook, she's throwing stuff she needs to be inside to use. Alima Lee McFarlane is beating her with combination with mostly straight punches. So Emily is on the outside looking in. Just like that, straight, long punches. Dakota's trying to answer back with hooks. That's never going to work. McFarlane doing a great job of turning her body and utilizing all of her reach. Diving in, single leg. Trying to push her way out of this one. Pressure on the head. Good job getting underneath the arm for Emily Ducote. Lee Malay trained in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu by Richard Boogie Man Martinez. Black belt under Eddie Bravo. Ducote at American Top Team Oklahoma City. Come 
Committing to any one particular attack. She's not dropping her hips and going double leg or Iranian, and she's not circling to really finish the single leg. She's really hanging on from this position. It costs a lot of energy. Now she's committing to the double leg, dropping her hips. Wow, a great take time defense by Emily to Cody. Great bounce. Problem is, this is all defense. You don't get credit in the scoring for defense. Late takedown in the round. Really huge yep. on the judges' scorecard. In round, she was already winning. Yep. <laughs> this title fight is headed to the championship round. Right. It's the new series, Ink Master Angels, Tuesdays at 10, right here on Spike. Jimmy, is Emily Dakota down three love? I have her down three love, 10-9 in every round. Championship rounds, first time for both women, fighting more than 15 minutes. But we somewhat expected this to be a back and forth battle that was gonna go deep. Mike Holger, Jimmy Smith, Jen Brown, first of two title fights partners. And this is one that I knew was gonna go I suspected would go at least into the championship rounds. Both fighters have a ton of heart. They're hard to finish. They know one another well. They're not going to be surprised by a whole lot. Alima and Fonda has looked excellent with their striking. Alima Lee has finished four of her six career wins. Of course, she went the distance against Emily Ducote. And in her Bellator debut against Maria Rios, she went the distance and won by split decision. She's feeling it going spinning back fist. 90 seconds in to the fourth. To wonder what was the plan B for Emily Dakota? Because plan A is not working. What does she have in the toolkit? The fight's not going her way. She said the fight's going to start in round four. Well, you know, show me. What are you going to change up? It's going to get to a legal limit for She hasn't found it yet. Both women coming off wins over Jessica Middleton. Dakota went the distance with her. McFarland won by armbar in just two minutes and 15 seconds. The only thing that matters now, though, is this fight right here, right now. Fans are loving this night and this fight. Very active. This is what title fights should be. We agree. Yeah, they're fighting like they want it. Fight to win, not fight not to lose. And don't want to lose and stay home. Yep. Don't want to lose. Combos, kicks here. Let's go. Combos. Midway point of round four. I'm surprised we haven't seen the, any attempt at a takedown from Emily Dakota. We haven't seen double eight from outside, push her against the fence, try and do a little Greco takedown because, you know, standing and banging on the feet isn't working for her. It just, you know, right now she's just getting caught with more punches and she's catching only with falling with. Unless she thinks her power might be the equalizer, I'd try the takedown, try to get on top, soften her in the way up with my ground and count. Yeah, Emily talked, Jimmy, about the fact that she really respects the wrestling background of McFarland. But if it isn't working here, gotta you got to try to take out. it there. I mean, and now she's really put herself in a position where a finish may very well be the only way she can leave with the belt. A big overhand right just missed. Hurt to the body. Great stuff. Left to deliver and then over, over the top with the right. Go 
and Alina Lay looks so confident on her feet. Such an evolution of her stand-up game we are witnessing tonight. I don't think Dakota, when she's throwing that left hook, she's, she's a little too planted. You know, Alina Lay can, can let that right hand float a little bit low. She maybe leaped with that left hook, put her pushed with her back foot, kind of tried, tried to kind of change distance to catch with. Right now, she's not. Another Superman punch. Alina Lay knows exactly where Emily Dakota is every time she throws. Boom! Nice. Final minute of round four. And the take is finally on top, but she has time to use it. Minutes remain. Red gloves, Zelie Millet McFarland. Blue gloves, Emily Ducote. First ever flyweight world championship fight. Another Superman punch. Scorecard Jimmy again, Zelie Millet McFarland. Four rounds to none. Only Emily was able to get done in that fourth round, was ended up on top, but 30 seconds left, didn't do enough with it to win back the round. Jimmy, you talked to both women about, you know, you can be a champion, you can win gold, and you can be the best in your division, but only one person can be first. And for Bellator right now, it's who will be the first inaugural flyweight champ. Yeah, that's an incredible honor. And both these fighters want it so bad, but Limoy has just been a little tighter and more technical with her striking. That's been the story of this fight. Now, you can see Emily Ducote, she hasn't given up. She still very much wants this fight. I don't see any quit in her, but she has to tactically find a way around the striking of Alina Lane McFarland. It's certainly something very special to Julia Budd, the first ever featherweight world champion for Bellator. She will defend her title December 1st in Thackerville. Those kicks have put a welt on the left leg of McFarland, but they haven't slowed her down at no, all. No, they haven't. And they're generally, generally speaking, it's tough to end the fight with them. Yeah. We've seen fighters drop with leg kicks, but it's extremely rare. You can usually tough it out. Are they the kind of thing you want to go to in round five? Okay, that hasn't paid dividends yet. You need a knockout shot at this point. The leg kick probably isn't going to do it. Your right so favor was too yeah. tough against yeah, Jose. Exactly. It was hard to watch. And Jose, remember those last couple rounds, kind of laid off on the leg kicks at the end. He and, did you know, I, and maybe if he kept going, he could have finished him with him. What I would do is change it up and go head kick uh, because you've been going to legs so often. But Alimale now working that flexible, flexible guard. And rubber guard here. Forearm in front of the collarbone. That's how you work it. See where she goes from here. Definitely doing a great job of controlling the posture of Ducote. Midway point of the fifth and final round. There you see the welt on the leg on the far leg. Legs a long way from your heart, kid. Exactly. Exactly. That's one of those things where that was a, you know it's a great to slow a fighter down, but. She's lost so much of this fight that it, it, you it, work unless you it, somehow you drop her with a leg kick, should be focused on the head and the body. Hasn't been enough to uh, yeah. affect Turn her ability the to, yeah. to punch and move in and you know be mobile. Just, Under two minutes, yeah, just wrapping her up with this guard. And that's what I talked about about you know the last couple of rounds is she can stall. She's yeah. ahead four rounds to none. She can wrap her up in the guard, keep her close, give away one round, and still walk away with the belt. Don't want to be in that position where your opponent can make the decision for you. Ninety seconds remain. McFarland. Would love to get a finish. Trying to isolate the arm. She might have it. Got it. 
It's all over! Alima Lane McFarlane is the first ever Bellator flyweight champion. Dead Orchard? <laughs> My 10th planet uh, vocabulary isn't as great as your former partner, Joe. But that is a fantastic armbar, we would say, okay, and Carlson Gracie. But great stuff from her. Beautiful job with the flexibility, with the guards kind of lulled her and made her think. Maybe we were thinking. Maybe she just wants to take it to the end of the round, and she got aggressive right when she needed it. Take a look at the finish on Black Card Premium Spice Rum replay. The bull, 93 proof rum. That's edgy to the core. And right here, look at that. A triangle over the arms. Not exactly a triangle position, but look at this. She isolates the arm, and as soon as the base goes right there, that is it. She can't resist the arm bar anymore. Once her base goes, look at it. She falls over to her right. Arm is straight, and that is all she wrote. Beautiful job by Alima Lay McFarland. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the verbal submission comes by way of the arm bar official time. Three minutes, 42 seconds into the fifth and final round. And now she is Bellator's inaugural women's flyweight world champion, Alima Lay, the eliminator. Ladies and gentlemen, Miller Lite presents Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network tonight from Pechanga Resort and Casino. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Women's Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carvelli, Chair. Executive Officer tonight at cage side, Mr. Andy Foster. Tonight's world title fight brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner. At five foot five, weighing in 124.6 pounds as a professional. She's nearly perfect. Seven victories, one defeat from Medellin, Colombia. Introducing the challenger, Alejandra Azul Lara. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 125 pounds even tonight. In her first defense of the title, she enters undefeated with seven professional victories, no defeats. By way of San Diego, she hails from Honolulu, Hawaii, introducing the defending Bellator Women's Highway World Champion, Eliminate. in charge of the action, Mike Beltran. All right, ladies, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Tough goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out, handle your business. Let's go, ladies. Mike Beltran, the referee. Alima Lay McFarland, the champion. Alejandra Lara, the challenger. Right, ladies, fight together for five. Let it fight. Five minute Let round. Fight. Let's go. Here we go. Tonight's fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Red gloves for McFarland, blue gloves for Lara. Lara talked about she's got some different things to bring out. Well, she came out in a soft, southpaw yep. stance instead of the orthodox that she normally has come out in. That's just trying to throw Alimale off a little bit. Both women have good grappling skills. They both have outstanding grappling skills, Mike. Both of them. They just do it in different ways. There's that rubber guard. Going to mission control here, trying to just take away the posture of Alejandra Lara on the ground. But right now, with her sticky, being that she doesn't have a lot of sweat, this is a good time to try to open up. There it is, bring that other leg up high and start working towards triangles. Lara spent her entire training camp in Mexico for this fight. 
Team Grosso Lobo MMA in Guadalajara said she may move there to train there permanently. McFarlane, of course, in San Diego. Right there's good attack right here. This is a problem for her. She needs to keep her arm from being straight. You don't want it extended out past your head. Although it didn't work, that's the type of attack that Alimale needs to bring out if she's on her back. Alimale McFarland, four wins by submission, three arm bars, one rear naked choke. She doesn't have control of that arm right now, but she's in a good position. There you go. Switching it into a different type of attack, and that's what she's doing with a triangle here. John, what's Lara looking to do? Lara right now needs to crush her hips down. In this position, don't start to try to pull yourself out. That's going to help what Alina Lay is doing. Continue to put pressure straight down. Keep those hips collapsed. Lara said she knows Alina Lay McFarland is a very experienced grappler, dangerous striker. One of the things that can happen in this position when you're in this, if you don't have it exactly right, and, you, and if you're Lara, you can survive in it. Alina Lay's legs can get tight. They're going to get full of lactic acid from being in this position. She's working it. She broke that, that lock. That foot came off. Now she's back to a normal guard. Biggest fight of Alejandra Lara's career. 23-year-old fighting for the belt. She's looking to take the belt. Started karate at age four. Right now, Lara's trying to figure out that balance position of where she can put pressure to keep Alimale down without her rolling, just like you're seeing right here. Lara, little Sanchao, little Sonda. But it, right now, Lara gets to, this is a good position. She's inside control, and this is gonna take away a lot of what Alimale does with her 10th planet type of jujitsu. Trying to advance position here and isolate that arm. That's good jujitsu by Lara, but she's getting a little high. Good back and forth ground battle thus far, north south. You see Limay trying to reestablish garbage, she doesn't do it. That flexibility is going to help. But one thing that Lara's got on her side is she's got great flexibility too, and she can bring her legs far away to keep that guard from being reestablished. Ali Malay said she thinks she has the slicker style of jiu-jitsu. Time will tell. She may have the more aggressive style and the one that's more flamboyant the way it goes after attacks, but that doesn't mean that it's better than the person that has the base jiu-jitsu that comes from Brazil from long ago. Good finish here in round one for Alejandra Lara. She said, my biggest advantage in this fight is my unpredictability. Well, and as, again, as you're seeing with what she's doing with her stance, she's very bladed. So Alimale should be attacking her with kicks. It, it, go with what the fighter's going to give you. Don't sit there and try to box with someone in that bladed stance because they're taking away almost half of their body just with their stance. And you gave round one to the champion, John? I did because she actually had the attacks. She went after, almost had submission attempts that put Lara in bad places, and Lara was unable to do any damage while on top. Has a nice elbow over the top. She's trying to open things up. Alimale needs to settle down, just start putting good pressure on her. That's going to help slow what Lara is doing down. 
And John, we talked about it at the top of the show, and we talked about it right before our main event. Alima Lee McFarland has been here before, and she's been deep all the way into round number five. And I remember before that title fight, she said, I was absolutely concerned about 25 minutes. If now she's done it, she knows she can do it again. She knows she can, and Laura is wondering, can I? Right. And when you have doubt, that tends to slow you down, stop your progressions, because you want to conserve, because you're not sure if you can make it. Doesn't mean she can't. No, no. But time will tell. Literally, time Rousey, will tell. You know what I got to be this? Our referee, Mike Beltran, speaking a little Spanish there. Can you translate? I could, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Basically said, do not grab the fence again. <laughs> fair enough. Nice takedown. Nice use of body positioning and pressures. She utilized Laura's pressure and that push to go for that takedown. Nice job by Alina. Hawaii State Wrestling Champion on a legit girls team her senior year. And the first ever Bellator Women's Flyweight Champ. Top position here, round two. Lars at least able to grab that foot. That puts her into a corner guard, so she has some ability to move Alina Lay's body to try to get to a better position. There she goes, reestablishing half guard. Seven and zero. Oh. That's a professional. Six wins inside the Bellator cage. Looking for some short elbows here. Not only short elbows, but those are hard elbows. That's strong. There's body weight on top of it coming down. Under 90 seconds on the clock here in round two. And you can see Alimale trying to isolate that arm. She's going to get herself back to the position where she's going to bring it up. Unable to do so, that arm is what she's looking for, but because of that half guard, stopping her because she has control of that leg, being able to move her body. Good defense by Alejandra Lara. Gets it back to half guard. She still has that arm isolated with her head, and that's a bad position for Lara to be in, because that rear naked choke is coming. Can she lock it in 40 seconds to work here in round number two? Two high-level grapplers. Yeah, she's still trying to establish, get that foot in, so she has control with both hooks. Doesn't have it yet, but she's taking her time, being smart, knowing, well, I'm not gonna go for a submission that I can't get. Let me start to pound on her. Let me gain some points. Let me show the judges I can want to control. 10 seconds. Yes, I will Really good round for the champion. All fight information, go to bellator.com. Round three. That'd be some good training to watch during a Caldwell and uh, Dominic Cruz. You think so? <laughs> Man, he gives so much credit to Dominic Cruz. And the, the, the mentoring and the tutelage, and of course, everybody's always talked about the knowledge of the game that the Dominator has always had. He's always been one of those guys that is the thinker in the fight. Yes. And that's what gets you wins. One of the things that Alima Lay's corner told her to do, I want you to be first. And she's not being first right now. She's actually accepting. She needs to move her feet, think about angles. The angles are going to get her where she wants to be. Oh, well, Darian the Wolf Caldwell be a one-off at 145 or might he be thinking about a belt at featherweight as well. That's a story for another time. Good job again by the champion. Well, that was a that was a big miss on that spinning elbow that Lara tries. She likes those spinning techniques, but if they don't work, this is what can happen. And 
And then it needs to be careful of not getting too high. She's got the one hook. She does not have both. You can see Laura trying to kick that hook free, but she can't do it. Alima Lay has been overwhelming thus far. She has, and this is what, after the second round, what happened, and now going into the third, this is a position Laura needs to start to work quickly to get out of. That was beautiful jujitsu by Alima Lay McFarland, letting her roll underneath. You want to turn towards me so I can hit you? Good, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to be turning over. Laura said she is very difficult to break. Well, she is. I, I've watched all of her fights, and she has her one loss. I watched that fight two times, and there were moments that she could have broken, and she didn't. That just says how gritty she is as a fighter. She is there till the very end. Sabina Mazzo, same city, same country. Yep. And you watched it. She displayed her toughness. Right now, though, she's in a bad position for Mount for Limale McFarland. And she's displaying that same toughness because she just got nailed by a big elbow that hit her right in the forehead. That does not feel good. Going for the arm. Can she get it? Looking for the finish right, right, right here, right now. You see that round. If she's able to wrap that underneath her arm, that's going to be something that's going to take her arm and put it in that big hyperextension move. She's trying to push that arm away with her foot. She just needs to stay with it, bring it over to the far side, bring it to her right side. That will get her arm bar. That is tight. Laura is a tough, tough girl. That is a tight arm bar. It hurts, but she's sticking in there. Wow. The one thing that that weight on top, that weight is keeping her arm from being hyperextended. So right now, although her arm's straight down, there's not the pressure that there was before. John, we just talked about her toughness and unwillingness to quit. Right now, Lila is looking like, I really don't know where to go from here. I like what I have, but I don't like it too. Limele needs to work to get those hips extended. That hip extension is going to cause the pressure. There you go. all over. Halima Lee McFarland remains the Bellator women's flyweight champion. Toughness from Alejandra Lara and the patience by Alimale McFarland, and she gets the finish. Our fight replay brought to you by Black Card Premium Spice Rum, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Check out the setup on this arm bar. As soon as that arm comes across, you see her leg come across the head. She gets a good, strong arm bar position. She has that thumb up. But Laura fights out of it, brings her feet across to push the hands away. You can see she's utilizing her legs to actually try to save her arm, and it does cause Alimale a problem in finishing it. The arm is being hyperextended, but she's not giving up. Look towards the end. This is what we talked about. Once she gets it back again, she gets that hyperextension. There's nothing she can do. The hip pressure's too much. she got it down. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of an arm bar officially. Three minutes, 55 seconds into round number one. The winner, still undefeated and still Bellator Women's Flyweight World Champion, Eliminate, the Eliminator, McFarland. Ladies and gentlemen from Honolulu, Hawaii, Bellator MMA Live on the zone from Blaisdell Arena. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Women's Flyweight 
World Championship. Sanctioned by the Hawaiian Mixed Martial Arts Program Executive Officer is Alan Taniguchi. And now, first, introducing the Blue Corner. At five foot seven, weighing in 124.4 pounds, her professional record, 10 wins, six losses, from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, she fights out of Boca Raton, Florida, the challenger, Valerie Trouble Laterno. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 125 pounds even tonight for her second title defense. She comes home, bringing an undefeated professional record of eight victories with no defeats. Hailing from Honolulu, Hawaii, presenting the defending Belladon Women's Highway World Champion, Alimale, the Eliminator, McFarland. Wins the referee in charge of the action, Mike Beltran. All right, you've been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Tough skills now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out. Handle your business, ladies. Let's go. The mutual respect has to be set aside. The Bellator Flyweight Championship up for grabs here in front of a sold out Neil S. Blaisdell Center. Alima Leigh McFarlane undefeated at 8-0, making the second defense of her title against right, Valerie Letourneau, who says she is visualized going fight. home to Go. Montreal for Christmas with the Bellator Flyweight Championship in her luggage. This is round one. The champion McFarlane in the red gloves, the challenger Letourneau in the blue gloves. McFarlane defeated Emily Ducote in their rematch. Utilizing the Dead Orchard, John, a 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu move that was created by Eddie Bravo Black Belt, Nathan Orchard, essentially a triangle choke with both of the both opponent's arms, arms in. Exactly. And so she is a very creative grappler. And she has, of course, five submission wins to her credit. She's an outstanding grappler, and she's just getting better. It's her ability to now transition from one submission to another that is changing the level of, who, of what Alima Lake can do. And McFarlane successfully defended her title with an armbar submission victory over Alejandra Lara in June of this year. Letourneau comes into Bellator at 125, is 2-0 under Bellator banner and, banner, and she's now 3-1 in her career at 125 pounds. 125 is absolutely the weight that Valerie should have been fighting at the whole time. It just there was no class where she was fighting there at that weight. So she had to try to go down to 115. And going down to 115 caused her a lot of problems. And she would lose energy in the fight. She would be fighting the first round, second, third round. She was struggling and she was losing too much weight. It is good that she is able to fight at a weight that she should be at. Latorno representing American top team, working with her. Longtime partner Hector Lombard made her MMA debut in March of 2007. Sprawl on the takedown defense by Letourneau, but as they stand up, McFarland lands the right. All that is good, and you know it doesn't matter that Alimale doesn't land that takedown. It's the matter of Valerie has to now deal with that. She has to think about that and it can change what she does in the stand-up attacks. One of McFarland's main training partners, Liz Carmouche, involved in the first women's MMA fight in the UFC against Ronda Rousey, and Carmouche has really helped McFarland hone her skills. Of course, she also works under Manolo Hernandez and Richie Boogie Man Martinez at San Diego Combat Academy and 10th Planet San Diego as we reach the midpoint of the opening round. Very much a feeling out process going on between the champion and challenger. You know, there is a feeling out process. And you've seen, what you've seen is a, a, a difference in the attack. Valerie, this is what I was talking about. Alima Lake cannot let Valerie dance on the outside and go where she wants without cutting her, cutting her off. You need to cut off that footwork and attack on that cutoff. Final two minutes of the round as McFarland lands the jab. That's exactly what I'm talking about, what she just did there. The 
Giorno opening up, finishing off that combination with an inside low kick to the lead leg of McFarlane. Mc Letourneau plants the jab upstairs. Footwork. McFarland trying to do the same thing. Both of them trying to disrupt the other's rhythm. Find a path to an effective attack. Both, both girls are being very composed. They're taking their time. They're not, they're not just crushing that space, but they're looking for their openings. And this is a feeling out system in that first round. Under a minute left in the opening frame. Letourneau's <laughs> corner, imploring her to set the pace. They want Letourneau to, to dictate the pace here. As Letourneau hopes that McFarland's return to the 808 ends in Heartbreak for the defending flyweight champion with 30 seconds left in the first frame. See, the Turtles using very good footwork to keep Alimale off balance and away from her. You gotta look at it, but Alimale has to get close enough where her hands can be on Bowery for that takedown to come. It wasn't until McFarland beat Emily Ducote in their first fight that she felt that, yeah, I, I can do this MMA thing full time. Well, she's proven that she can do a lot more than that as we go to round two of this flyweight championship fight. So many luminaries in attendance here tonight for this much anticipated main event, the homecoming for Limale McFarlane. Alex O'Loughlin of Hawaii 5-0 in attendance. And the professional way, surfing legend, Kelly Slater. Yeah, Hawaii's known for its surfing. You were saying, John? I uh, say, well, the guy you saw sitting there next to him was Egan Inouye, a legend here, well, here in Hawaii. And we Super mentioned Brawl. it, so, yeah. Yep. Speaking of brawls, remember Frank Shamrock and the yeah. Inouye brothers? You remember, you remember Egan jumping in there? <laughs> you know, in Canada, where the turtle from, we grew up street playing street hockey. In Hawaii, a lot of people grew up street fighting, but it's part of the culture. And yet, McFarland says in their household, they didn't even watch fighting and they never fought amongst each other. Again, it's incredible what Alima Malay McFarland has been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. All the way back. All right, ladies, second round. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Head up, let's go. Oh, Letourneau's more than ready to fight. Bell in round two. You mentioned your keys to victory at the beginning of the fight after the first five minutes as McFarland secures the takedown on Letourneau. Well, I guess I just may have answered my question looking for what you wanted to see in the second round, and McFarland immediately gets the takedown by Letourneau controlling the posture. Limele taking her time. This is exactly what I would have told you. Limele needs to figure out a way to start crushing that distance so she can get this takedown and start working her strength against Valerie. And, and Letourneau not just controlling posture, but really putting a squeeze on this control here. Well, she is, and she's trying to bring that, that guard up. She's controlling that posture, but look at Valerie. You know, you've seen her. Valerie is very good off of her back. She has got a good ground game. She's got a good submission game. What arm this bar is not going to be easy for Alimale. Yeah, Letourneau, though, has a recorded submission victory since 2009, and now McFarlane stacking Letourneau up. McFarlane wanting to over. get the full mount. I step over a little too much. He's way too high. And Letourneau attacking the right leg of McFarlane. Elbows now being dropped by McFarlane. McFarlane needs to keep her arm against that cage, use it as a pressure point and a balance point, and just start attacking Valerie here. Letourneau, who challenged you on the great check. Well, she now has a training partner of hers, an American top team, and, and here McFarlane now 
Trying to shrimp, trying to oh, but it's Letourneau that's turned the tables on McFarland. He's out on top. And there's a right hand, a series of rights by Letourneau. It's not a good thing with Kalina Lake grabbing over the head. It can get you in a lot of trouble. She needs to take her arm off of Valerie's head. She's looking for a throw. That's a better job with the wizard. Letourneau resets in the center of the cage. Inside low kick delivered by McFarland. Letourneau with twice the experience of Alimale McFarland. And again, as we mentioned, John, the, the caliber of opposition that Letourneau's been inside the, the cage with. It is so hard for people to understand when, when you have been there and done that with these people that are extremely, you know, just they're just great at what they do. You know, a Joanna Jajacek, you look at Claudia Cadell. These are girls that are all considered the top people in the world. Valerie Letourneau has gone the distance with all of those girls, and she has a great skill set, and something that she's doing right now is controlling that distance, pushing the lead away back, making sure that the fight occurs where she wants it to be. Letourneau felt that she didn't need to keep this fight standing to win. She's very confident with her jiu-jitsu. Been training jiu-jitsu since she was 19. She just loves to fight in the stand-up as this partisan crowd rallies behind Alima Lay McFarland. Is that an eye poke? A minute and a half left in the second round, and McFarland willing to touch gloves. And it does appear that the turtle had issues with that left eye momentarily. Yeah, she did, and you, you saw McFarland being the sportsman yeah. that she is, she packs off. A lot of people would go, oh, really? And then you, you don't say anything, and you, they're gonna go and attack you right away. Well, McFarland. But McFarland definitely needs to figure out how to stop this footwork of Valerie Let's know If Valerie is able to continue in control of this fight, it's gonna start to slip away from the lead line. Final minute of the second round. Letourneau beginning to get loose, finding a rhythm. Trying to establish the jab. McFarland also trying to find a way on the inside, and that's not the way you're going to do it, John. No. Yeah, you got to set things up. Throwing a big haymaker is great when someone's hurt, but it's not going to do anything when someone has got full consciousness that they know where they're at. You've got to set those things up. Less than half a minute remaining in the second round. What you're seeing is you're, you're seeing Valerie. When Alimale attacks, you see her countering. She's not just accepting, she's giving something back. When Alimale is not attacking, then Valerie attacks, and you're not seeing that counter from Alimale. This is round three, scheduled for five. The undefeated champion, Alimale McFarlane in the red gloves, the challenger. Valerie Letourneau in the blue gloves. John, you have it for Letourneau through two rounds. I do, and it, it, the, the one thing that was close in the second round was those elbows that she landed against the fence. But in my opinion, Nimele needs to step up this attack in the stand-up. If she's going to stand with her, she needs to start throwing and landing and countering what Valerie's doing. Well, a new champion was crowned last night here at Neil S. Blaisdell Center at Bellator 212 when Michael Chandler became the first Bellator three-time champion. Back on top at 155, Valerie Letourneau would love to uh, repeat what happened last night tonight. But McFarland looking for the takedown and well defended by Letourneau. Four minutes left in the third. Tenacious, for it. but a wide base by Letourneau, putting her weight down on McFarland and doing a good job of defending thus far with the Wizard, but McFarland trying to find an opening and does land some left hands to the face of Letourneau. Nice sit back by... Oh, McFarland has Letourneau's back! Nice sit back by Alimale, that was a beautiful move. 
going exactly where she was going. McFarlane has a standing rear naked choke submission victory. Now looking for one on the ground. Letourneau trying to defend. Valerie being very calm in this position. She's been here before, but Alibale has a lot of time to work from here. And she does have a lot of setups and a lot of attacks. Letourneau's been knocked out twice. She has never been submitted. And this crowd exhorting Alima Lay McFarland. Alima Lay starting to work to catch that arm so she can make her a one arm defending fighter. Notice how she has that arm trapped now, Morrow. That's a bad problem because Bowery only has one arm to defend now against that choke. Alima Lay is doing a great job of systematically breaking down her defense. Go for the arm. McFarlane looking for the arm bar, but Letourneau now on her feet. Letourneau puts the knee down, drops a hammer fist, but now the triangle. And that arm is across. She's in trouble with that. That is tight. It's going to cause her a problem. Remember, McFarlane won the title with the Dead Orchard the variation ball. of the triangle arm bar. Now she's got a triangle on Letourneau, and it's... McFarland delivering strikes. The more that you see McFarland extend your hips in this, the better off it's going to be for her. Do not let Valerie collapse your hips. Beautiful job. There it is. There it is. Let the luau begin. Alima Lay McFarland returns to Hawaii and defends the flyweight championship in style. The Eliminator improves to 9-0 with her sixth submission win. What a moment! McFarland's family overcome with emotion. The Blaisdell Arena is on its feet, Morrow. I think they have a new star. Alima Lay McFarlane, the argument could be made with people like Michael Chandler. She is one of the faces of Bellator MMA. And what a reaction from this crowd. Alima Lay McFarlane was a basketball player, high school wrestler, suffered knee injuries. Gave up athletics, moved to San Diego, pursued her education, went to a gym to lose weight. Well, she's gained a championship and successfully defended it here tonight. Look at what she does after that takedown. Valerie Lutrino tries to get herself back up. She takes the back. And when she takes the back, it was the maturity of her grappling that was on display. She starts to push that arm down and traps Valerie's right arm with her leg. From that point, now she's dealing with trying to choke someone that can only defend with one arm, but then switches it to the arm bar. Valerie tries to defend, transitions to the triangle, and from that position right there, that is tight. That is a beautiful submission by a great submission fighter in a Limale McFarland. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a triangle choke officially. Three minutes, 19 seconds into round number three. The winner by submission and still Bellator Women's Flyweight World Champion, Alima Lowe, the Eliminator, McFarland. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the SAP Center, Bellator MMA now presents the first of tonight's double main event, five. Five minute rounds for the Bellator Women's Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carmelli Chair, Executive Officer at Cage Side, Mr. Andy Foster. And now, live on the zone, we introduce the blue corner. At five foot four, she weighed in 123.8 pounds. Her professional record, five wins, two losses. Hailing from Boise, Idaho, presenting the challenger, Vita Arteaga. 
And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 124.8 pounds in her third defense of the title. She stands undefeated, nine victories, no defeats. Fighting out of San Diego, California, she hails from Honolulu, Hawaii. Introducing the defending Bellator Women's Flyweight World Champion, Eliminate, the Eliminator, McConley. In charge of the action, your referee, Jason Herzog. Okay, Fred, has gone over the rules in the back. There were no final questions from you, Blue. There were no final questions from you, Red. If you want to touch gloves, go ahead and do it now. Come out ready to fight. Jason Herzog, our referee. The champion is Alimale McFarlane. That is what is on the line. Her flyweight belt. The challenger, Rob, Vita Ortega. Here we go! Red gloves for the champ. Blue gloves for the challenger. And Alimale looking to utilize her wrestling early. Very smart move by Alimale. Don't stand there and brawl with a brawler. Be the technical fighter. Get inside. Get her against the cage. Work towards the takedown. And Vita's going to sit here and continue to try to make this a brawl. First five-round fight for Vita Ortega. Alimale has gone into the third with Letourneau, the third with Alejandra Lara, and the fifth when she won the belt against Emily Dakota. A lot of pressure that Alimale is, is driving into Vita against that cage. That takes a lot of energy with what she's doing. She's working hard for this takedown. Alimale set hands down. Vita is the most aggressive fighter I have ever gone against. Beautiful job of getting her arm around, getting to that double leg that she lost here. Vita fighting hard to get her leg back. She needs to be smart about her balance point. Use that fence. Vita looking to weather the early storm. Vita's doing a very good job of remaining calm. Yeah, she was taken down. She gets herself back on top. Gets herself back to the fence where she's up on her feet. This is exactly the kind of fighting she wants to do as far as when Alimale tries to take me down, I'm not going to settle for that. I'm going to get back up. Nicely done by the champion. Really good job of Alimale sticking with it. She's got that back now. Let's do it. Both hooks in. And she locked one down early, John. Well, both girls are brown belts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But she, there is a difference in what Alimale does and how she does it. So we're going to see how Vita is able to handle the Jiu-Jitsu style of Alimale and McFarland. That crazy Eddie Bravo, 10th Planet style. Oh, there's nothing crazy about it. You know what? It is an outstanding system of no-gi grappling that they have come up with that is very effective. It's just your knowledge in dealing with it is going to be, can you survive in it, or is it going to get you? You've got a good knee bar. Attempt going for the heel hook now. Crazy, crazy doesn't mean it's not outstanding. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm just thinking of Eddie's personality. Stranking on it. Limelight looking for an inverted heel hook. She doesn't have that knee bar set the right way. Her hips are not in the right position. She can still get that heel hook if she does things right. But right now, she needs to bring her body actually closer to Vita to lock that in. You can see how that leg is slipping through. All the way, her knee is out. There's nothing there. OK, how about the jiu-jitsu system of that crazy Eddie Brown? I like that. OK, there we go. And that right there, what, what you were seeing is Alimale knew she didn't have anything, but she was trying to figure out her way of coming out on top in this situation, and it just wasn't there for her. And look at Vita now. Brown belt under Boogeyman Martinez is Alimale McFarlane. Vita putting on some pressure here in round number one. I think we are going to have ourselves a fight partner. <laughs> I like it. 
This is what I'm talking about. Here comes Vito. This is that Joe Frazier in her, man. She just keeps coming forward. She does not even understand how to walk backwards. Her best fight to date was her fight against Emily Dakota. And her fight against Emily was good, but her submission win against Denise Kills. The reason why that was so good is she stood in the middle of that cage and threw with a world champion yes. kickboxer and did not back up. And then finished it with a standing guillotine. 40 seconds, first of a potential five, five minute rounds. Via looking in her corner, led by her brother, Freddie. Looking for that guillotine. Twenty seconds. Both women told us their conditioning is at the highest level it's ever been. All the underwater training for Alimale and a work ethic like none ever before displayed for Vita Ortega. Round one on your scorecard. On uh, my scorecard, Alina Lake gets that round. She was the aggressive fighter. She was the one that was actually searching for that submission, trying to put it on. She did the better work overall, but not by much. Vita Ortega is right there with her. Vita, the first time I called one of her fights and we interviewed her, John, she said quite simply, I know how to wrestle, I just like to brawl. <laughs> Spends a lot of time working her wrestling with Matt Nader at Boise State. Scott Jorgensen, longtime MMA veteran. Beautiful takedown. Well. Beautiful job by Alina and McFarland. Smart, mature fighting. Great job of feeling that positioning and that push and then going with it. Vita Ortega. Way to work herself free here, partner. A lot going on. Alina Lay is using a lot of energy here, Michael. We're going to see all that, you know, underwater training and everything that she's been doing, saying, you know what, my heart rate is staying low and all these things. We're going to see exactly how good that training is for MMA. If she can keep up the pace that she's been bringing, it's obviously doing something good. Vita's debut in the Bellator cage was back in 2016, a win over Jackie Vandenberg. Alimale was in Jackie's corner that night. Jackie's in Alimale's corner tonight. Many years later in this title fight. McFarland trying to posture up and do some damage. Well, she, she is posturing with her legs, getting herself up, but her head is still staying low in the middle of you know, take a sternum area, and that is not where you're going to generate power. So either bring your head farther up towards Vita's head if you're in the stand-up position, or I want to get my head up high. We got someone that's bleeding here. Yeah, there's no doubt that Alimale McFarlane has been cut. You can see the blood on Vita's chest, on her shirt. That's for one of those elbows that yep. Vita's been throwing from underneath. As Jen Brown mentioned earlier, Alimale is in a five-way tie for the top spot all time with six submissions inside the Bellator cage. She has done that in eight fights. And this is what Alimale needs to do. If you're gonna be in her guard, then make her pay for holding you there. He did a nice job taking the opportunity to get up. Neiman Gracie, he has six and seven fights. Chandler, Yamauchi, and Held also on that list. 145 on the clock here in the second round. Our first of two championship fights, double main events, right here on to Zone. Nice right hand by Alimale. Nice counter. Yeah. 
one thing you're seeing, look at the Lumelay's mouth. It is open, which is telling you she's not able to breathe through her nose, which keeps her mouth open. That's where you can get hurt with a punch, can break your jaw, can knock you out. It is always good to be able to close down on that mouthpiece. And right now, Lumelay's got an open mouth, as he's saying she has to breathe through her mouth to get that air she needs. Broken nose? It might be, you know, it's bleeding. Can't really see it. Doesn't look like it's misplaced in any fashion, but just because it's not, you know, sitting a little sideways doesn't mean that it's not broken. We saw the blood, we saw the elbow, and we got ourselves a heck of a title fight, which is, when you and I talked about this, John, kind of what we expected. I did, I expected this to be a war. I, I expected it to be that battle of Alina Ray working to get the fight to the ground and doing what she does so well, and Vita trying to keep it on her feet and be in that brawler and sucking Alina Ray into that brawl with her where she can land the bigger shots. 10 seconds. Nice inside leg kick. which has helped her evolve on the ground. And guess what? She delivered a big hit from the ground with that elbow. Did she do enough to win round two, partner? I do think that, you know, Vita Ortega did enough in that round. She landed the better shots. When you look at Alimale bringing her down, she got her down, but did nothing with that position at all. So the grappling wise, you know, there's really nothing there. You gotta go to the shots. Vita Ortega takes the second round. We have an even fight. The youngest, the only girl, Vita, with three older brothers. Of course, big brother, Freddie, also a professional fighter, in her corner, her trainer, her big brother, and by far her biggest fan. She, she has a definite advantage in a lot of ways when you think about training with her brother. Her brother, Freddie's a 125-pound fighter. Absolutely. Same as she is, and they are constantly battling. And that helps her. She was working out with someone who's actually physically stronger than her. And then she is able to get into positions where they physically start to push it and figure out technically how to get herself out. That only makes you better. The battle of baby girls, the youngest of six children, is Alina Lane McFarland. Big elbow by Alina Lane McFarland. And that's a huge cut. Those sharp elbows. Game changers. That elbow definitely opened up Vita. Right in the middle of her forehead, that thing came down. She has probably about an inch and a half cut in the middle of her forehead. You can see Jason. Yeah, they're gonna check it. Jason Hurzo is gonna stop it. Just let the doctor look at it. It's not in a bad spot, Mike. It's just a matter of the blood going in the eyes. The whole thing they want to do is make sure that she can see. It's a big, ugly cut, no doubt about it. It's a matter of, do they think that she's going to be able to see with the way the blood's coming down? The doctor there, ringside physician Diego, he's done a ton of fights. Most of the time, he's going to try to let her go and see what happens. But if it opens up anymore, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Look at what one shot can do. Just said it a second ago, partner. Game changer. It is. Man, the only thing I'm thinking right now, they got to fight again. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, you that is it's an absolute win. You can say nothing about it for Alima and McFarland. That's a TKO victory. But she was having her hands full. Look at this elbow land, solid. You can see it right in the middle of the forehead area and it that it was a good two inch gash at least and it was large you can see by the display of it opening up big shot Limale landing you know that, that's just part of fighting and that's part of MMA good job by Limale unfortunate for Vita but she's going to get another chance somewhere along the way because she was proving she belonged in that cage with Alima Lay McFarland. There, there's no question. And my guess is Alima Lay would be the first one to say, yeah, I'd love to fight her again.
Ladies and gentlemen, upon the advice of the cage side physician, due to the cut, referee Jason Herzog waves off the contest officially. One minute, 50 seconds into round number three. The winner by TKO and still Bellator Women's Lightweight World Champion, Eliminate, the Eliminate McCarlin. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA Live on the zone from Blaisdell Arena. The time has come for the champ to once again return home. Tonight's main event, five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Hawaii MMA Program Executive Officer at Cage Side, Alan Taniguchi. And now, from Honolulu, we introduce first the blue corner. At five foot six, weighing in 124.4 pounds, in her first Bellator title challenge, she enters with 11 professional victories, three losses, and one draw. From Nuki Cornwall, England, the challenger, Kate Jackson. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner. At five foot four, weighing in 124.8 pounds, making her fourth title defense. She stands tonight undefeated. Ten victories, no losses. Proudly hailing from Honolulu, Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, the defending Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Ali Malay, the eliminator. In charge of the action, your referee, Jason Herzog. But as we're going for the rules in the back, there were no questions from you, Blue. There were no questions from you, Red. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Come out ready to fight. Main event upon us here at Bellator 236 for the Bellator MMA Flyweight Championship. McFarlane put a lay around Jackson's neck at the win as a sign of respect. And, well, tonight, Jackson would love to leave the Bellator MMA cage with the Bellator Bro, buddy, belt around buddy, buddy, her right. waist. Bell in round number one, the champion McFarlane in the red gloves. Jackson the challenger in the blue gloves and McFarland admits that she is a slow starter. She can see this fight going into the fourth or fifth round. And the fact that, well, Jackson has never been finished before, so McFarland does see that as a challenge, although she thinks she's gonna get the submission in deep waters. Well, I'll tell you what, she is a girl that, right now, getting those double unders, that's a beautiful thing for Alimale. And I believe that in the top position, Alimale is going to create a lot of problems for Kate Jackson on the ground. McFarland grew up less than 10 minutes away from the Neil S. Blaisdell Arena, attending a private school whose most famous alum was U.S. President number 44, Barack Obama. McFarland named after the official Alan Flower of Ohio. The Alima recognized a bull for its delicate yellow paddles. Nothing delicate about the flyweight champ. No, nothing delicate at all. She goes after her opponents. I love her tenacity, still has those double underhooks. Gets and the takedown. And pays off. McFarlane, 10-0 with six submission victories. Jackson has never been submitted, has been stopped due to strikes. She was stopped by Joanna Jajacek in a fight long ago by the doctor, but she is tough. Every time I was ever in the cage with her, she showed grit, she battled through bad situations, and always seemed to come out on top. No doubt that Jackson is in tough here in hostile territory. Sometimes it's good if you got the entire house that's against you, it's just you and your team. You think, you know what, it's us against the world. Let me go out and prove it. Jackson was on a season of the Ultimate Fighter where she was submitted, but of course, not official during the uh, tournament, John. So only the one knockout loss. And here avoiding, trying to avoid being 
Submitted by Alimale McFarland, patiently working from the half guard, dropping a short elbow strike across the jawline of Jackson. That that short elbow strike is something Alimale should be looking to right now. It's she, she is submission based and it's in her mind. But you can open her up by landing those heavy elbows. McFarland became the inaugural flyweight champ when she defeated Emily Ducote at Bellator 186 in November of 2017 with a fifth round submission. The Dead Orchard in a rematch with Emily Ducote. Dead Orchard created by Eddie Bravo. Black belt Nathan Orchard, which of course, That's right. it's that triangle choke. Both of the opponents' arms with in. Both arms in. And now she's looking for the guillotine choke. Oh, we got an anaconda right now. Oh, an anaconda, yeah, looking for that knee. Right now, this is smart with what Alimale is doing. You notice she's not trying to crank on that anaconda choke. She's more holding the position and looking to do damage with knees. We have seen constant improvement from McFarlane in the striking department, and now Jackson leaking like a political document here in the opening round, less than 90 seconds left. McFarlane looking to bring the challenger back to the ground. Yeah, taking that, she just let go of the anaconda. Still has control of the neck. Tried that outside trip, did not work for her. And now Jackson has the champion along the fence trying to impose her will as she's got the back the waist lock under a minute left in the opening round yeah. kate jackson with a gable grip holding the position Lemonade just needs to take her time work the hands like she's doing work that one arm inside and slide it past the body mcfarland Defended the title against Vita Ortega, involved in that bloody battle with Alejandro Lara at Salute the Troops last night. Lara defeating Ortega, would love another crack at the flyweight title. She came up short against McFarlane, but now they continue to jockey for position, and it's McFarlane again with the challenger pinned to the fence. McFarlane did a nice job of taking her time, getting those hands in positions. Oh, there's a slicing elbow strike by Jackson. And some striking to close up the round. Break a round, buddy, you ready? Buddy, you ready? Fight! Bell in round number two. The unofficial scorecard of Big John McCarthy reads. 10-9, Alimale McFarland, that was definitely her round. And the reason you gave it to the defending champion? Let's be honest, she controlled the grappling, she had the better striking, she gets the round. Jackson, before that front kick, and now just testing the waters, trying to find the most comfortable range. And again, McFarland continues to improve in the stand-up department. That is really where I've seen the improvement, and it's her confidence in her stand-up, Morrow. She is now more confident. You can see her giving feints, pulling her head off the center line when she throws, just like she did right there. She is just becoming more and more polished. Has recorded two victories in the form of a knockout. Early stages of the second round, scheduled for five. And in fact, Jackson told us she was a little surprised that she got the title fight when she did. She thought that she'd need another victory before getting this opportunity. And yet, Seizing upon it here as McFarland closes the distance looking for the takedown. McFarland with that very deep. You know, Juliana Velasquez waiting in the wings following her victory over tonight over Bruna Allen, watching with vested interest. And there's a right uppercut on the inside by McFarland on double underhooks by Jackson. Good dirty boxing by Lima, you saw. Kate Jackson was trying to frame and push her head out. Walk off this wall. Walk off this wall. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Bubbling by McFarland, trying to create separation, turning the tables momentarily. They jockey for position. Elbow over the top by the champ. Hey, hey, hey. 
digging for that underhook, getting it. Nice elbow on top. Knee shield momentarily. They doing a good job pressing her head in there, trying to control the head position of Alina McFarland. Midpoint of round number two. Jackson trying to stay busy, trying to touch up the champion with the left hand. There's some separation, they throw strikes, and again, it's the challenger pinning the champ along the fence. McFarlane trying to pummel. Oh, another elbow across the face by Jackson. Very nice inside with that elbow. A lot of energy being expended here. The, the, the battle for position. You are so right. This is, this is absolutely grueling. People have no idea how much energy is being spent as you're being pressed because you're pushing against another human being the entire time. And the take take down down. by McFarlane. Much to the delight of this partisan crowd here at the Neil S. Blaisdell Arena. Second year that Bellator MMA has returned to the holiday season. Headlined by Hawaii's favorite daughter, Alima Le McFarland. Yeah, you see him. Kate, when she gets taken down, immediately is going into risk control. And Alima Le works her way out of it. That's when she starts to do her work. Alima Le McFarland, a 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu brown belt under Richie Boogeyman Martinez. She received her brown belt in May of last year. A minute now remaining in round two. Nice, this is the elbows I was talking about more. In this position, just keep on, if, even if it's just your one hand, slide the hand on top, press it down, slide that elbow right into the side of her skull. Liz Carmouche, the newest signing to Bellator MMA, one of Alima Leigh McFarland's training partners in San Diego, a great addition to Bellator MMA along with the likes of Kat Singano. So the Bellator MMA women's divisions continue to be bolstered, but at the top, Julia Budd, of course, will welcome Chris Cyborg in January at Featherweight, but Lehman Le McFarland continuing to control Kate Jackson here in round two. What a step over. Nice step over into north-south position. And now, looking to neutralize Jackson, Alima Le McFarland. Nice mount position, she does not have. That is not gonna be enough to get that tap. She needs to work towards a straight arm lock. So innovative and so evolutionary in the approach of how to attack people. I think it's a great system. This is round at number three. Jackson trying to establish the jab. McFarland utilizing some head movement, bouncing up and down, avoiding the attack from Jackson. Nice uppercut inside by Alina Lynch, Beautiful knee to the body. And looking for that takedown. Whizzer by McFarland, being well defended though by Jackson. Jackson hand grappling. That wrist control has been a problem for Alina throughout this fight. Jackson. Snatches the leg, trapping the left leg of the champion, but releases the grip, backing up. It was McFarland's older brother by 20 years, Alden, that really introduced her to fighting and, and really someone who's been such a key figure in her life. Of course, it's always been a family affair about the McFarland. She's the youngest of six siblings, her lone brother, a military veteran who's had a huge impact on Alima Leigh McFarland's life. Absolute huge. Got her wrestling. She won her state high school wrestling championship in this very building. Jackson. Eating a couple of short right uppercuts, and Jackson backs the champ into the fence, and McFarland looking for the double wrist lock potentially, but Kate Jackson unable to do much here against the champion, trying somehow to find a way to really begin imposing her game plan. Yeah, you know, she's been 
She's been getting these positions where she gets her gable grip around the body, has a body lock, is able to deliver some knees, just isn't able to do the damage that she needs to do to slow Alimale down in her attacks. You know, we talk about history potentially taking place here tonight for Kate Jackson. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention Rosie Sexton and the pioneer that she was for women's MMA in Britain and really one of the most smartest individuals that's ever put on five ounce gloves. She's a professor. <laughs> yeah. And Jackson beginning to open up. There's a stiff jab that lands for Jackson. And now McFarlane over the top of the short right hand. Right uppercut by McFarlane. Nice little level change by McFarlane. This is where we talk about her progression in the stand up. You can see, look at how she's giving little feints. That, hit, that center line, that head moving off of the center line. Keeping Kate Jackson, oh, guessing. Of course, McFarlane's head trainer, the affable Manolo Hernandez, saw something in McFarlane the moment she stepped foot into his San Diego gym. She attended looking to lose some weight after being a partier during her college days. And here she is now looking to defend the flyweight title for the fourth time, showcasing some of that defense. The head movement that Alima A is displaying today is way better than what we've seen in the past. Nice straight shots by Alima A. That hurt her. Kate Jackson is a tough woman, man. She has taken some shots and she is still getting, still in it, still looking for her opportunities. Jackson a little reticent and attempting to throw the attack, probably cognizant that things like this can happen where McFarlane immediately closes the distance, pinning the challenger along the fence. And the, the final 60 seconds of the third round. Kate Jackson always seems to go to that two on one. Look at her with that wrist control. McFarlane talked about bringing in the fourth or fifth rounds. 42 seconds away from the championship rounds as McFarlane secures another takedown. Neutralizing the right arm of the challenger. Elbow to the rib cage of Jackson by McFarlane. Yeah, one of the things that has kept Kate Jackson safe is look at that wrist control. Emile has found it hard to break the grip of Kate Jackson. Well, the fans here at Blaze Dell Arena don't want to stop the McFarland party. Kate Jackson would love to end her title reign here as we embark on the championship rounds. This is round number four. And how do you have it after three rounds, John? And why? Oh, right uppercut, another right uppercut by McFarland. Right now, I have a Lima and McFarland in a shutout. Beautiful. Nice job of taking that good oh, sweep over. by Jackson. They struggle here in this scramble, and McFarland regains her position in the butterfly guard of Jackson. Beautiful transition by both women. Jackson looking for that elevator sweep on the champion, but being in. Pinched upon by McFarland, now posturing up. Back to her feet, momentarily trying, yep. Not so much back to her feet, trying to utilize her knee to slice through. If, Kate, if Kate's gonna pull her that way, let me slice my knee through and create a problem where you're the one making this happen. You see Kate trying to get that butterfly hook inside on the leg. They almost passed into side control. Jackson doing a good job of maintaining the guard here as McFarlane working from half guard, half butterfly hook. Minute and a half gone here in the penultimate round. fighters to keep working. McFarland's trying desperately to get to side control, but running up against the fence and the 
The Wiley guard of J uh, Jackson. Yeah, the cage causes you sometimes problems, and that's the direction you need to go. Something is blocking that path. But the elevator's not going up, Joe. <laughs> oh, but the punches are coming down. This is what I believe Rivale should be looking towards. If you're going to have her up against the cage, then use the cage and press forward, posture, and look to land big, heavy shots. This position, she can push off and try to take a lima lay and push her out towards the center of the cage, but she's not going to take and elevate her towards the cage because the cage is going to stop that. That way, a lima lay can use that block to get that posture and bring heavy shots. And there, McFarland passes into north south now, attempting to snatch the back of Kate Jackson. Good heaven. Almost going towards the crucifix with where that arm's at. She controls it. Less than two minutes remaining in the fourth. I'd like to see Alimale take her left leg and throw her hook inside. That's going to take the back of Kate Jackson. And McFarland now has the back looking to put the hooks in. Jackson potentially attempting that backdoor escape, but she is being controlled here by McFarland from the back, but McFarland high up. She's very high right now, Morrill. She can hold this position and she can work this for an arm lock. Of her six submission wins, three have been via armbar for the defending flyweight champion. She also has a triangle armbar on her resume. Less than a minute left in the round. She almost turned her over right there. Kate is trying to hold that arm in position. There you go. McFarland predicted a submission win in the fourth or fifth round. She was control the head. 40 seconds left looking to extend the arm. Jackson desperate to keep her grip. She should use her leg to push off the bicep, separating the hands of Kate Jackson. Under 30 seconds left in the fourth. McFarland fishing for another submission. Jackson doing her best to defend the attempt. Jackson going to a figure four of her arms to hold on. Jackson is definitely going to survive. The fifth and final round of this flyweight championship match is upon us. Take a look at the striking sex. 83 throw, 43 letter. That's 52%. That is outstanding by Alimale McFarland. Anytime you have 50% uh, or more, it's a, it's a good step. In strikes, you're doing well. Jackson's thrown more, but hasn't come close to landing the same percentage. And for Kate Jackson, knowing that now there's just over four minutes left in your attempt to become the champion, John, what would you be telling her in your corner? You know, I, if I was in her corner, I would tell her, Kate, you're behind. There's no way for you to win this off card, so I need you to just go for it. Why isn't she yet, John? What is it that uh, well, Leon Lay McFarland has said? Shown her that is keeping Jackson reticent right now. Well, Limley has hurt her multiple times in this. Has put her in bad positions and had her close to being submitted. So she doesn't want those things to happen. She wants to look for that big opportunity, but I don't think that big opportunity is going to come. And in terms of the the learning curve, and let's face it, despite being the champion and being a dominant champion at that, this is still just the 11th fight for Alima Lay McFarland. What have you noticed her biggest improvements being in this fight? No doubt her biggest improvement is right what we're looking at right now. Look at her footwork, look oh, at her head movement, combination. and look at where she places the shots. Her striking is improving. 
exponentially from when she started now it is an entirely different game because she was only a submission fighter for the most part now she's becoming that complete mixed martial artist Jackson was telling us that on the feet she likes fighting at range, saying that her best weapon is her left hook, but an MIA this evening. Well, I, I, I honestly believe that Kate Jackson's best weapon is her ground game. The, the problem for Kate is she's just been outdone by Alina Lay McFarland. Yeah, on the feet we were talking about, but you're right, in any facet in any here. Any facet of the game so far. You know, you're looking at this, the clinch work. Although Cade has clinched with Alimale, Alimale has usually come away with the better output, the bigger knees, the elbows inside. She's gotten the better work. And then when they separate, she's doing better in the stand up. And when it hits the ground, she's the one controlling it there. Jackson spent a dozen days in Los Angeles to help acclimatize to the time difference, training with uh, MMA veterans Anthony Hardonk and Vladimir Matyushenko. Making the long trek from the UK to Hawaii, and now just a minute, 50 seconds left. And that's what I'm talking about. On the exit, lands the uppercut inside. The best shot oh. of that clip. Left hand lands for McFarland. Picking apart Kate Jackson. Final 90 seconds of this championship fight, and again, McFarland initiates the clinch on Jackson along the fence. with Aline Lay McFarland's conditioning for this fight because we have had a lot of grappling situations, clinches and against the cage. Remember what happened before the Vida Ortega fight? Yep. Hands clasped. Once you get the hands clasped, you have that takedown. just a matter when you want to do it. Yeah, McFarland's conditioning superlative here and has the takedown on Jackson and the clock continues to tick away. Less than 40 seconds now left. And what appears to be as McFarland gets the mount, the fourth successful flyweight title defense for Lehman Lay McFarland. Less than 30 seconds left for McFarland to send the fans home happy with the finish. But regardless of what happens, it's been another impressive night for Lehman Lay McFarland trying to close the show in style Who with ground and pound as the back of Jackson dropping down the right hand. The crowd anticipating a finish, but we're going to the judges' scorecards, but it's academic. Sorry, Miss Jackson. McFarland's for real. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in this world title fight, we'll go now to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Michael Bell, scores it 50 to 45. Well, judges, Sal D'Amato, and Chris Lee, both see it the same, 50 to 44. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Ali Malay, the Eliminator, McFarland. From the Sanford Pentagon, Bellator MMA now features three five-minute pounds in the flyweight division. Live on Showtime, we introduce the Blue Corner. At five foot four, weighing in 125.6 pounds per professional record, six wins, three losses from Campinas, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Bruno. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot four, weighing in 129 pounds, the former Bellator flyweight world champion tonight stands with 11 professional victories, two defeats, hailing from Honolulu, Hawaii, presenting Eli Malay, the Eliminator, McFarlane. In charge, your referee, Jason Herzog. Ready. 
go from hunter to hunting in this sport so quickly. You can, and it's all about focus, and it's all about the one thing that's so difficult. Nice right hand by Green Island. So difficult as a champion is sometimes you tend to lose that focus up. You don't have a target. There's nothing that you're looking towards. That that's my end goal. That's where I want to get because you, you, you've been there. Runa Ellen in looking at Alima Lee McFarland. She has a target on her. Does Alima Lee have that same feeling about Bruno? Movement from Bruna Allen early. Only combinations. On her right by Lee Lay. In her title defenses. She stayed patient, but when the fight got to the ground, that's when she did her match. Both ladies throwing big shots right now. Bruna Ellen needs to stick with that jab. She's got a very sharp and fast jab. She needs to utilize it often. Fighter Bruna Allen was tentative, as most young fighters are. She was in the new country, on a big stage, outrageously young. That's a good shot. Didn't like get the best of that exchange. Emily had been using a lot of feints trying to get Bruna Ellen to come in and throw. She's decided, no, I'm not going to be the one leading the dance. I'm going to go after you. She's the one that's usually initiating all these exchanges now. Everything on the feet for the first three minutes. Either has landed high volume, and Lima Lay has probably hit the best shots. Bruna Allen, you have to win the fight here. Oh, absolutely. That is, you know, this is where Bruna Allen is best in the stand up. Very elusive. She's got good power in her hands, fast hands. So you're trying to counter what Alimale is doing. Later in the round, now you see Lima is looking for opportunities here, not just to strike. She's got to rise on the late round takedown. Both ladies being very boxing centric, not really using kicks. Going after everything with their hands, not a lot of elbows being thrown in here. I think we see one elbow from Alimale. And it seems a natural thought when you don't see Alimale using her kicks, you wonder about the knee. This right here is the Emily McFarland yes. we expect. Pressure, grappling. And we've talked to Bruna Allen. This is what she said. I went back to the drawing board. I, I've worked on my wrestling. We're going to see right here how effective is she with it. Good round for Ali Malay.
buddy, you ready? Buddy, you ready? All right, what are you telling Bruna Allen in the corner? And it's going to make her, when she has to be more efficient in the stand-up. How do you do it? Your first off. Not like that. Quit waiting. Yeah. You've got to go after her and, you know, the feints are fine. Every now and then use your feints, but you've got to start throwing and making her back up. If she backs up, she doesn't throw quite as much. Right there, beautiful right hand down the pipe, but you've got to have more output. The other part I would say is start to bring those strikes into play. I mean, the kicks into play. She hasn't kicked basically at all in this fight, and she's got good kicks. For whatever the numbers are worth, there's been only one kick thrown in this fight in the first six minutes. Is that it? Yeah. Liam McFarlane, yeah. And I, it might be that Bruna Allen is worried about if I start to kick, then she's going to be able Grab to the leg. get to point, getting me down. You, you don't want to take away your tools, though. Nice job of pressuring by Olimile. She had that single leg for a while, then just let go of it. Going back towards the double leg right now. They'll try to pull that leg out, turn her body. Unable to get it. It's just so much stronger. And Bruna Allen is a much stronger fighter than she was when she was younger. She did a great job of defending against the yep. takedown there. That is a big difference in, you know, when we've seen her in the past. Many times she'd end up on the ground in those situations. Well, all of the things we're talking about speak to the improvement of Bruna Allen, but none of them speak to her winning this fight right now. No, not right now. She really needs to start just tapering in those shots. She's winging shots, start to straighten them out a little bit, go down the pipe, you'll be more successful. They're gonna get there quicker, you get more accuracy on your blows. Well, there was a kick. First kick attempt. Now he's beating Vita Ortega. Beating Elena Calyando, another younger fighter that we kind of overlook and forget how young she is. This is certainly her chance. He wants to be ranked in that top ten. She is upset at the fact that she is not right now. Well, this is her chance right here. Output is the key. She needs to really start throwing shots and making it to where Aline Lay is having to deal with all this offense coming towards her, and it's going to slow down what she does. That was what she was afraid of, getting that kick caught. If you bring the kick up high towards the head, it's difficult for the opponent to both block and catch the kick. So that's a good area for you to go to. Watch John Lemelay is doing the same thing she did in the first round. As it gets late, she's moving forward, being more aggressive. She's going to try to finish this round along the fence or on the ground. She just took a big left hand. This is a carbon copy of round one. They tried to bounce her off of the cage there so she get her foot behind. Not what she wanted, though. Luna Allen ending up in a position. Emily can come up on top. She just needs to take her time, use her weight to press forward. That's a good job by Emily right now. You see Bruna Allen almost having the back, but she doesn't. Emily needs to kick that leg free. She's got the top position. There have been openings for Bruna Allen, but she has not been able to get through them. Right now, Alimele, yes, yeah, she got the takedown. She hasn't landed one okay. shot. Nothing has occurred offensively. And here comes Bruna Allen back to her feet.
through two. Now we're in. Moldovsky is going to change that conversation. Stay tuned, as we say in the TV business. Good left hand land up multiple times by Alina there, and she's really getting after it now. Going for the earlier what she has to do. Yes. Right now, I have this fight even, and I think whoever takes this round is going to be the one taking the fight. And if it gets to the ground position, Alina has a very good chance of dominating what occurs in damage. The improvement here in Bruna Ellen's defense is noteworthy, it's impressive, and it's important in her development. But you don't score points that way. No. It doesn't matter how much you're able to defend. It's a matter of what you do offensively. Here's an example. She's been able to get up. Bruna Allen at 22 and 21 does not get up that easily against the Lima Lane Farm. No, not at all. In fact, she, she settles for the bottom position. Yep. And so she has absolutely changed her abilities in the fight. We'll see if she can stop this takedown. See if Alimele switches to the single leg from the double. This is how she got her takedown before. She trapped the leg. She needs to turn it out. Unable to do so. She's jumping for it. Brunella going for that. And she got it. Yeah, it's it, tight. It's, it, it is tight, Sean. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, it is. Feeling it. She needs to use those legs to extend her back. She's she locked the whole. legs. Alima Lay is putting up with a lot of pressure, but she's trying to relax here. Thumbs up telling you she's okay. Alima Lay McFarland has never been stopped. Bruna is not extending her back. That's the biggest problem with the guillotine attempt right now. She needs to use those legs and hips to extend Alima Lay back, which will intensify the choke. You got a great look at the grip there. She still has the grip. She's got an S grip on that. It is, it's in there, but it's not enough. Alima Lay is a good enough grappler. Been there so many times that she's just trying to relax, trying to put on with it. It's not comfortable, but she is just dealing with it. But she is on, even if she doesn't get a finish, she is on offense here, and the clock is ticking in a close fight. Well, what Alima Lay is hoping is that Bruna's going to burn her arms out here, and that once that choke comes off, she's going to be able to open up on it. See, as that weight comes forward, very difficult for Bruna right. to create the pressure to make that choke work. Alima Lay using the fence legally. Yep. Okay, by grabbing the head, what she's doing is keeping her from being able to extend her back. That's a smart move by Alima Lay. That is improvisation. And notice the shoulder pressure on. Yes. Bruna Ellen right now, that shoulder pressure is creating a choke situation it is. for Bruna Ellen. She has turned the guillotine, almost reversing it into a Von Flute. That's why Bruna Ellen just let go. Yep. She the pressure was too much. Pressure. Now we've got a fascinating final 85 seconds. Ali Malay McFarlane in the top position. Alimele in a position where she could possibly get the arm triangle choke. She's got the head in the position, but she's in full guard. She's using her left arm now to try to release Bruna Ellen's right arm so she can slap into that spot. This is quite a rally from the former champion. She was in a dangerous spot. And she's out, but she's already, I think fans here reacted to her getting out of the choke, not realizing she was already in an offensive position. Exactly, she was offensive at a certain point, like, that's what they're looking for. To turn the fight, the momentum, and maybe the judges in this third round. Alima Lynn McFarland, the former champion, showing the heart of one here in the final minute of the third round. Weeks and months of people questioning her heart. Just saw it on full display.
Great stuff. Never underestimate the heart of a champion. Did she snatch victory from the jaws of that choke? It's really going to come down to how did the judges look at those two choke attempts because each lady had it. Ruta Ellen had her in a deep, try, deep guillotine there. You see her jump the guard here because she's got that neck, and that's tight. She's got a good arm in guillotine. You saw this right here is Limele using the fence to relieve pressure and then trying to use that shoulder to create additional pressure on Bruna Ellen, which it did when you saw her hands come apart. Yes. It's telling you, I can't just sit where I'm at. I've got too much pressure. I've got to change it up. And then a little bit of good ground and pound wasn't enough to take the round. The crowd reacted very late when she popped out of the grip of Bruna Ellen, but she had long since turned that position into an offensive one. You're absolutely right. I don't think the crowd saw it the same way that we did. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Brian Miner, scores the fight 29 to 28. He sees the fight for Ellen. Your second judge, right. Anthony Manis, scores at 29 28. He sees the fight for McFarlane. While your third and final judge at cage side, Michael Bell, scores it 30 to 27 for the winner by split decision, Eliminate! The Eliminate! McFarlane! A come from behind win for the former world champion. Live on Showtime from the Blaisdell here on the island of Oahu. Bellator Hawaii now presents the co-main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing first the blue corner. At five foot six, weighing in 125.6 pounds, ranked now at number two as a professional. She's near perfect at 11 and one with one draw, fighting out of Tokyo, Japan, the judo beauty piece, Kanda Watanabe. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner. And five foot four, weighing in 126 pounds even, the former flyweight world champion is back on her island with the number three ranking. She stands at 12 professional victories, two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, proudly hailing from the Luamu Valley Kingdom of Hawaii, presenting Ili Malay, the Eliminator. In charge, Kerry Hatley. All right, ladies, this is where you work for. Ready? Let's go to work. High emotion, high stakes. Tanabe's only loss, almost a flash knockout in a minute to Liz Carmouche. The signature win on Liz Carmouche's climb towards the flyweight world title, which she successfully defended here last night. Inevitable, John, this gets to the ground. It's just a matter of how. It is. It's only a question of time. Both ladies are going to be on the feet trying to strike with good strikes, but eventually the clinch is going to come. And when it does, you're going to see each of these ladies looking to be the person that comes out in the top position. So I don't see how it ends up being on the feet for very long. Good straight right from the Lima McFarlane. 
Nice knee by Connor Watnock. Three years and five title defenses for Lee Malay for a division that didn't even exist when she started in her second fight as a professional was her Bellator debut in 2015. A year later, she was the champion. Nice right hand by Lee McFarland. She's much more confident with her stand up now than you talk about in the past, like you're talking about. She relied mostly on that grappling, but she's always had power in her hands. Now we're seeing the fight get to that point. Connor Watt now be working hard to get this to the ground, be in the top position. Watsonambi, when she gets it to the ground, doesn't really hunt for submission. She just dominates from that position. They're both high-level grapplers, but very different. Yeah, Wanabi will rely on ground to pound a lot. She likes to work with strikes on the ground, get to a half guard. She likes to do a lot of damage from that. Emile McFarlane more of that Eddie Bravo 10th Planet. She also has that strong wrestling background. When she was a wrestler here in Hawaii, she's got that, but a slick move by Kana Watanabe. Look out for the arm. And Limalei, can she grab the wrist to keep herself safe? That was close. That was a dangerous moment. Watanabe, Lee Malay, and a lot of her earlier wins, her title offenses, she was a stronger fighter. She was able to impose her will on the ground. And one of the things that we know about Watanabe is her physical strength. We've seen her multiple times just physically outmuscle her opponents. Nice job to get out. Combination in the right five zone. And Alina needs to just continue to look towards, hey, I need to throw my hands. Just like that. Step in, throw your hands, throw in combinations, and then exit out, readjust, and come back and do it again. Her entire career, and you see now the damage that Alina Lynn McFarland is starting to inflict. Another right gets through. Her entire career has been using these strikes to set up the groundwork. Yep. And in this case, it might not be such a bad thing for her to keep it here. Why not? She felt, you know, what Connor's like, that that right hand has found a home. She's winning this round big because of it. From be the beginning of this round, she's been accurate with that right hand. She needs to believe in it. World championship level fighters find different ways to win. What the situation calls for. Things about Watanabe, take a look. That head's right on the center line, doesn't move it much. So it's a target. And she left it on the center line against Luis Carmouche. The fight didn't last very long. Exactly. Great work by Lima and McFarland. Not settling to be on the bottom. She needs to be careful of her neck right now, but she's in still. She's in position to shake herself out. Dominic, six seconds left. Big round on the feet for Alimale McFarlane. Okay, and if she, she stays stop, safe, stop, she can stop, to the end of the round. Round two, ready? Let's go to work. You gotta think Watanabe is gonna want this on the ground sooner. You're seeing Watanabe really start to push here. Looking towards getting that takedown, trying to set it up with her hands. And she's she's feigning that takedown, looking for level changes. There she goes. That's good stuff from Melinda Lane McFarland against world-class judoka. What you really, that backside, you, all these little sweet techniques with the legs and feet, very, very difficult to deal with. But right now, Lemelay doing a good job 
against Connor Watanabe's judo technique. Again, there's that sweeping of that foot. Very nicely done by Connor Watanabe. Feet. And I think what, you know, really what we're seeing out of Valina is she, by looking at tape of Kana Watanabe, she's saying, look, she doesn't really go after a lot of submissions on the ground. She's more of that ground and pound style. She uses her strength. She hits people with strikes. I'm not going to sit there for her. I'll give my back to try to get myself back to my feet. And it's worked for her so far. Here we have a is the yeah, one looking for She's starting for to hunt now. Yeah, she's hunting for that. She's got that Kamara grip on the arm, but it's going to be very difficult in this position for her to clear that arm. It's all the way across the body. Not in a bad position at all for Kana Watanabe. Hard to tell how tight that is. Well, it, it is a scissor, and it can put her out if she gets it on both sides of the neck. If you can touch those carotid arteries, I'm not sure that she's in that position to make that happen. Normally, that's when your calves are on the neck. And Len McFarland trying to connect her hands for a second now. Donna's in a, a nice position as far as side control, but she's put her hands and locked her hands. So right now she's nothing more than pressure. Now she's released that. We're going to see what she tries yep. to do. Release both hands. Again, exactly the scouting report here. She hasn't done much with the position. Yet. She's looking towards that arm triangle. She's trying to separate that arm. You see her head keeping that against. Yes, nice job by Elimelech McFarland. Exploding out, getting back to her feet. But she cannot get out of the grasp of Kana Watanabe. Don't grab Very it. few do. On the outside trip. from the bottom and she has stayed more on offense in this discussion of position versus damage like that in what is a close round but the, the heavier shots are going to be from Kanawa Navi she has the ability to throw with the gravity and moving her arm back you can only move your arms back so far to load up if you're Alimalan McFarland coming up there's just not as much velocity or torque on it. More elbows from the bottom. Watanabe strikes more effective, but more volume from Alima Lane McFarland from the bottom. This is going to be a tough round. Stop. All right, ladies, great job. Last round, ready? Let's go to work. is really going to have to work at using her strikes to keep the pressure of Kana Watanabe. If she wasn't able to do that right here at the beginning. Watanabe already forcing her towards the cage. Now Lidale holding on, didn't nice give in that takedown. Watanabe looking to Uchimata there. 
gets Umle down, but she doesn't have her where she wants her right now. Umle goes, look towards the reversal, wasn't able to slide through. Umle can finish this off by folding that leg over. Well, yeah, a couple of good shots got in, and it may not seem like much, but the margins here feel very thin. They are very thin. You're seeing both ladies having their moments, both having the ability to possibly get the advantage on their part. Beautifully done by taking the hand away by Kana Watanabe. Not giving Alima a lot of room to work here. Watanabe really wants to turn Alimale off of that fence, get those feet away, and Alimale keep as much as she can and explode when she decides to go. You can really use that fence to wall walk, turn your body position, makes it very difficult for your opponent to hold you. Watanabe really had Alimale McFarlane's left arm pinned, and Alimale McFarlane working hard to free that left arm, which he just did. That's why she couldn't explode out the first time. I really like to see Alimale wall walk herself to the left here. Still right. Well, not able to get towards the back. Alimale's going to get to her feet. Nice work. Watanabe still holding on, though. We've seen this multiple times throughout the fight. Alimale works her way back to her feet, but Watanabe does not let go. I was just thinking there, is there an elbow here for <laughs> Alimale McFarland? That looked like it was there. She doesn't want to let go of the wrist. At some point, someone's going to have to take some chances here as we go to the final two minutes of an extremely close fight. Yeah, this fight is still definitely up for grabs. Every little shot matters. It does. Lima Lee McFarland won the first round, it felt, on the feet. Connor Watanabe won the second round, dominating from top position on the ground. Here's where, here's where Limele really yes, needs to let go of those hands. Believe in your power. Believe in that right hand. It's been landing throughout the fight in the first round. When you're on your feet, you were great with it. It feels like Kana Watanabe has to get this to the ground here within the final minute. Yeah, you would think this is a very important part right now. If she gets the takedown, it's going to be tough for Alimale. If she doesn't, Alimale just these little strikes. This feels like sudden death overtime right now. That's how close this fight is. Job Alima Lee McFarland has done to stay on her feet here. Against one of the best in the world at making you not. Great stuff from two of the best in the world. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Twenty-four hours ago, Liz Carmouche had come from behind. Successful title defense with a fourth-round submission of Deanna Bennett. Her eyes peeled on this. Her longtime connection to Japan, where she grew up. She has a dream of fighting Kana Watanabe in Japan. 
Her longtime friend, Alima Leigh McFarlane, and the longtime dream of those two fighting for the world title. Now it is in the hands of the judges to determine which direction this division that has given us so much goes next. Let's take, take a look at some of this action. Alimale here when she was going for the takedown. You see the wizard by Kana Watanabe. She's working herself back to her feet. And then Watanabe uses that wizard, pulls the hand here, beautifully done. But really wasn't able to do much with the position. The difference, uh, John, the difference to me, it seems, is that Alima Le was doing some damage while Watanabe was hunting for position that she never really got in that third round. It, I mean, it's super close. It is close, but it's that, that right hand is the real difference maker in it because it landed and it had some impact. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in tonight's co made event, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Derek Cleary. Scores the fight 29 to 28. He sees it for Watanabe. Your second judge at cage side, Sal Damato, scores it 29 to 28, scoring the fight for McFarland. Your third and final judge at cage side, Brian Miner, 29 to 28 for the winner by split decision. Eliminate.